Hello, everybody. Here we go. It's number 124. Mm -hmm. It's me and Lori today. And uh, yeah, let's, let's do it. Welcome everybody to the SF Company Hour. This is number 124. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't have a pretty graphic in the background, you know, to welcome everybody <laughs> here today. But um, I wasn't as prepared as I should have been. And usually Ray has all of that cool stuff ready. I just show right. up and do the show. So I had to put a little bit more thought into this one. That's okay. So, yeah. Well, th thanks, Lori, for joining me. No problem. I'm Everybody's... happy to be here. There we go. Oh, no, Lori's on this side now. Um Everybody's seen Lori before, you know, she's been on the show many, many of times. So, mm -hmm. you know, how you been, Lori? Good. Uh, you know, just working and uh, trying to, you know, not worry too much about Comic-Con coming up and things like that. But it's uh, it's getting to down to the wire. But uh, I think that will be it'll be happening this year. So, yeah, everything is good. Well, I know that there's a surge happening and. I haven't heard anything about anything coming back so far, mm -hmm. and especially with traveling, how traveling uh, <clears throat> transportation mm -hmm. agencies just rescinded a lot of the, the the previous mask restrictions. So yeah, it's pretty much life almost back to normal. Yeah, I, the thing for us though is that with the new portal, there was a new portal on the on the Comic Con website, so they're populating all the badges, but so far the press badges haven't shown up yet. So I'm kind of like, because I already have my hotel room and my plane ticket. But my um, boss, who's the contact outlet, he says that he's going to check on Friday. And if it's not there on Friday, he'll email them. But I think the R's are probably going to be the last ones to get populated. So we'll see. But Our, Well, cross fingers on that one, man. I'm, yeah, um, I mean, we're, I... we're approved, so it's fine. You know, we know that we're approved uh, because everything rolled over from 2019. So we're still approved. It's just a matter of them actually getting. But everything is so behind anyway, because um, people that have gotten their regular badges, the dates are all mixed up. Like they have, you know, the 24th to the 24th. It's like, no, I've got three day badges and it all has the same date on it. So it's, you know, they're they're kind of repopulating a lot of stuff. So it's going <clears> to <throat> take some time. Okay. Hopefully they get their shit together and uh, yeah, no shit. <laughs> you, you have a good you have a good time. I know um, after three years, my God, man, dude, it, it feels nice. It's uh, just just seeing just just seeing everybody again. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean we see we seen people before, but it was a mask thing. Yeah. And I'm not gonna go into the whole crazy mask, whatever. I'm fine with masks. You know, superheroes yeah. wear masks. Yeah, well, exactly. We, luchadors wear masks, which we're there gonna go. talk That's about true. today. They do. So they, let me see. Let's do. go to let's go to the chats real quick. Krista, hola nerds. Yeah, oh, hello Krista. She's uh, giving you a hello, Lori. Hi, Krista. Meow, meow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I should have put those on the you know. Yeah, I have to show those more like that. The meow, meow. All right. I had so much that I have to learn. It's, you know, I'm still in the back a... backwater. Like Ray got this down to right. a T. Yeah. Maybe we're going to have technical difficulties. Uh, no, I think we'll, we'll hopefully be okay. So, <laughs> Well, you'll be okay. This is uh, shot number two. Oh, Lord. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> we're going to have a fun show, Lori. We're going to have a fun show. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> okay. So the first thing I wanted to bring up, Lori, mm -hmm. is I'm a big fan of Blumhouse. I don't know how you feel about mm -hmm. Blumhouse when it comes to horror. Mm -hmm. They're... Uh, they make a lot of good movies to me, for at least yeah. in my opinion. So, did you get the chance to see the new uh, trailer for Dashcam? I did. I was kind of, I, I don't know. It's weird because it, I'm. It looks good, but then it kind of looks a little cheesy, and that didn't it didn't really impress me that much because I think that it reminded me a lot of Blair Witch. But Blair Witch, mm -hmm. of course, was at the time it came out. It was oh, you know, like ahead of its time and everything like that, and. I don't know. I guess with all the the dash cams that that are out now, it's kind of like that looks like just regular dash cam to me, like some weird footage. And 
I don't know. I mean, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I could be completely wrong, but I also like the horror films that don't reveal too much where you're kind of like you, you can hear the thing, but you can't see it kind of thing. You know, like the yeah. old, the old type horror. Th- I mean, yeah, it, it's just, I guess the, da- the whole dash cam thing is just that weird how it's, uh, you know, it's come so far. I know since Blair Witch, but it's also that kind of, uh, yeah. you know, and Blumhouse does do good, great stuff. Don't get me wrong. They do have some great, um, <clears throat> properties and they've done some great movies, but, um, sorry, Brando's like running around the house. Like, a... yeah, I talk, yeah, I love, I love the, I love the, the, the paws on the hardwood floor. They, yeah. can't, they can't get a good hold. I know he slides across the floor. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it'll be interesting. Is it, I forget, did they say that it was coming out in theaters or is it on streaming? Uh, it looks like it might be in theaters. It's a, mm. it's a tip. It's a, it's one of those movies that won like international, uh, acclaim, right, right, right. you know, Toronto international film festival. Right. But, uh, I don't know. I, I looked at it. I was hoping for something better. Mm-hmm. Um, it just too, it's too much a shaky cam and, mm-hmm. It, shaky cam the one thing about shaky cam is just like you said how it's uh, it's that slow reveal mm-hmm. shaky cam will show you the reveal but you can't really see it because they're shaking the shit out of the camera yeah. so you, it, it, you're <laughs> left with that whole oh i saw something oh, oh shit that was scary and it never really gets you i think i think seeing something like flat out or yeah. like you think you see it but not with the a, a blurred vision uh yeah that makes any sense like well no, it's I, I just... kind of it it reminds me of i was thinking of like in alien remember when i think what is it tom scarrett's character or whoever's character is come, walking down the ladder and then all of a sudden you the see shaft. a flash and the and it's yeah the shaft and all of a sudden and you see a... it right next to you and you're like what? and then it goes dark and you're like Fuck! that kind of that's the kind of shit because it makes you think about oh god what happened what happens next exactly Exactly. I think the fact is a lot of movies right now, at least with horror, they try to show you too much mm-hmm. because it's like, I, I like the movies that leave things to the imagination. Mm-hmm. That's, that's good. It's good filmmaking. Yeah. It's like, holy shit, what, what happened? No, it's not mm-hmm. that you get to see him getting, you know, split wide open. That's, that's torture porn. I mean, I like that. I like that movie kind of stuff too, but right. it, it's just everything in its due time. It can't be right. overdone. Right. And right now, shaky cam yeah. is being overdone. And uh, I know Blumhouse is only the production company, you know, kind of distributing it. But mm-hmm. they should still be careful of uh, attaching their names to certain things. They don't yeah. they don't. Want, yeah. You yeah. don't. Not that it's a bad thing, but you don't want to turn into full moon entertainment. You know, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Not that it's a bad thing. Right. Yeah, I, I love Puppet Master and I love all the transfers. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just it's and I, of course you know as you said the your mind is is probably the the most imaginative when it comes to that kind of to not reveal that or to reveal it slightly and then your mind will take it somewhere else that you know could possibly be even worse than what they show you on TV, on TV or wherever else you know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think that's why the movie it it really mm-hmm. resonates with me. Mm-hmm. It's it, it's 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 whatever you're afraid of. And right. I'm like, God damn, that's a, that's a broad spectrum of things, you yeah. know, yeah. because I think at, at one point or another, we're all scared of the dark in one way or another. It's like, I'm not scared of the dark and just being in a room, you know, in the dark, that doesn't scare right. me, but it's going downstairs right into the garage. Mm-hmm. It, it's still in that little basement. Kid, yeah, in a exactly. basement. It's yep. still that little kid feeling that you get like, oh, fuck. Why? Well, I don't want to hear shit, and then your mind yeah. starts playing with you. So well, the weird thing, let me, this is a this is a funny story that I will tell. When I was living at home uh, with my mom, for some reason or another, I have no idea ever why she did this. But at one end of our long hallway, she put a red light, so it flooded the entire hallway, and that hallway led to the bedrooms. So of course, it was always like a red hallway and then black behind it. And I remember one time, my one of my dear friends. Uh, she was sleeping over and she's like, I'm not walking down that hallway by myself. 
<laughs> I was like, you've been in my house how many freaking times? But she's like, I'm not walking out the hallway by myself. And I was like, what is wrong? It was so funny. But it that's the kind of thing. Epi- yeah, it turns into an episode of The Haunting. That's right, what it does. Exactly, exactly. And that's just, that kind of reminds me of that. And also, I, I love, and this may sound weird, but I love watching it. There's the, um, hi, Alex. There is the um, show called Finding Bigfoot, which I love watching because I just think it's it's freaking hilarious. And they're in the middle of the woods in the dark. I mean, like pitch black dark. That scares the shit out of me because it you don't know. And especially in an environment that you're not used to, especially when you're in, you're out of your element and there are things that can see in the dark better than you can. And it's right? kind of like, Ugh! And so sometimes they're like, oh, yeah, we're just walking down. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, no. <laughs> what are you? Oh, my God. I mean, you can see them because they have like an infrared, but they can't see it in the dark. So they're in pitch black. And I'm like, oh, my, I can't. No. I'm like, that. that's that's the, that's the where I draw the line. I'm like, nope, thanks, sorry. Yeah. All I need to hear is a fucking guttural growl, and I'm like pissing, in my, pissing myself. Exactly, oh. exactly. No. Or not even that, but just a twig snap. Like, if you're the only one out there, and then you hear a twig snap, and you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, that, that's just, that, it's, and that's like classic horror movie shit. I'm just like, right. if there's a dude with a hockey mask right behind me with a machete, yeah. I'm going to be very pissed. <laughs> All right, let me see. Okay, uh, we got uh, Han DeLorean. Hel- hey, fellow movie nerds. All I got to say is The Northman. Wow. Yeah, I really want to check that movie out. Yeah, me too. I, I think so I'm going to get tic- I have to get tickets for it. Who, who does that one? Is it Robert? Uh, it's Alexander Skarsgård, I think, is in no, that. No, I don't but remember. Who's the director? Eggers? I don't remember who. T- I Maybe. I'm not sure who, d- who did that one. Let me see. I think if, if Alex, if you're still there, you know, who's the director for the Northman? Because I, I, th- I think he does a uh, Northman director. Yeah. Who is it? Robert Eggers. Oh, okay. Robert Eggers. Yeah. That guy's dope, man. He mm-hmm. He's, uh, I mean, people don't give him shit for The Witch. I actually like The Witch. And I haven't seen that one. Yeah, that's the one with uh, Anna Taylor Joy, where it, oh, it's, right, it's right. Okay. very creepy. It's a period piece, oh, which, okay. is, which I tend to enjoy a lot. So uh, I know people. It's it's a it's a slow burn for folks, but mm-hmm. that's a that's a damn good movie. And then he did I'll the Lighthouse. Oh, okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so it is the same director that did yeah. the Lighthouse. Okay, okay, that should be interesting then. Yeah. Yeah, let me see. Now let's go to uh, things that, you know, Ray sometimes does things just to poke me. Um, and, Surprise, really? Yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> so, so there's a new show coming out called Poker Face. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, I mean, it really is like the perfect storm. Like this is pretty much mm-hmm. like mine and Ray's Armageddon. Right, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, Ryan Johnson and Adrian Brody have been, like, teamed up together. And the other thing that kills me about, like, Ryan Johnson is I'm mm-hmm. finding things out. All he all he does now is these mystery movies. Mm-hmm. And so you're telling me you're a one-trick pony because you tried sci-fi and... Mm-hmm. You made a pretty good sci-fi movie. Pretty good sci-fi movie. It's just a horrible Star Wars movie. Yeah, that's all it is. But it's it's a a sci-fi for you know. Like I'd like to see him do. Actually, no, he fucking ruined Aliens too. Oh God, don't even. No, no. Yeah, I was like starting to think. I'm like, I don't ever want that. Make up original shit. Yeah, I think that's the easiest way for him. If he makes up Mm -hmm. original shit, he doesn't have to worry about pissing off a fan base. You can just start a one. Right. So. Yeah, but Ryan Johnson <laughs> and Ray's favorite, uh, Adrian Bodie, uh, Brody. Adrian, oh, if it was, yeah, if it was other Brody Bruce, yeah, he'd like it. But yeah, details about the series or its characters have not been revealed beyond the show being described by Johnson as fun, character-driven, case of the week mystery. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> so, the one thing that I kind of see this show and having like one death nail in its coffin already. Is that mm-hmm. it's on Peacock, right? So, yeah. you know, right now I don't I don't think Peacock. I'm not sure if it's Paramount. I, whoever has uh, was mm-hmm. it 1884? That's probably the only show that they have. Mm-hmm. But or Yellowstone, 
those are the only shows that they have right. other than that there is nothing on a lot of these networks uh what's it called just tried halo you know which is a game oh right right yeah uh, a game series and it is getting ripped apart oh wow it, it, it does feel now since we're watering down television and yeah. movies that everything is starting to feel like this is uh direct to streaming might be the new direct to video if some oh, right. if some mm-hmm. streaming services aren't careful they're going to be known as second rate studios netflix they do shows right mm-hmm. i'll give them that amazon is proving to do shows right mm-hmm. showtime and hbo have been doing shows right for a while same with oh, stars yeah. But all these newer ones like Paramount, Peacock, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm, they might be the only two actually. Because yeah. Apple, I mean, Hulu sent okay some good shows. stuff too. Hulu sent some, some good, good orig- shows, yeah, original stuff too, yeah. But uh, yeah, this just has uh, disaster written from get go. Yeah, just because uh, I don't know, people don't tend to like Adrian Brody for some reason. I think it's because uh, some shit got out about Family Guy that, you know, he had a joke and he couldn't take it seriously or oh, he took right. it too seriously. And yeah, okay, whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever. Everybody <clears throat> got to, you know, relax, learn how to take a joke. You know, right. I had to. I'm a very yeah. serious person, if people can't tell. And <laughs> I had to learn how to take a joke. So everybody else should learn and right. stop slapping people, you know, because that's yeah. not the right thing to do. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's got a pretty good cast. I mean, aside from from Brody, it's got Natasha, Natasha Lyon, who I like a lot, and then uh, Benjamin Bratt, who's a Bay Area boy, which we loved, which I love as well. And it, did it say jo- Joseph Gordon Levitt? Did I see that as well? Joseph no? Joseph Gordon yeah. Levitt. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's got a great cast, and we'll see. But the, just the also the, the name of it, Poker Face. Like, I, yeah. I I can't help but think of the Lady Gaga song. I just can't. As soon as I I see that, I'm like, oh okay. It's like, <laughs> so it's as a as a mur- as a mystery kind of a thing. It feels like it's gonna be who everybody's keeping like you know a poker uh, face pretty exactly. much. Yeah. So it's it's a who done it, mm-hmm. and I, I I've seen a lot of who done that were done in like miniseries. Mm-hmm. What, what was it? Uh, I think one there was one called Harper's. Harper's Island. Oh, maybe. Uh, back in the back in the early two thousands, that I fucking enjoyed. I think it was a mini series, like a four part mini, four to five part miniseries on NBC. Mm-hmm. That was pretty cool. But um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the production yeah. value on some of those shows, you know, is right. not that great. I don't know the writing. I mean, what they is Picard? Picard got picked up for season two, but. It, I don't know. I don't know if it did as as good as it thought it was going to do. A lot yeah. of these are they're second rate. Uh, second. Yeah. Oh, and another thing I noticed also with um, with the poker face is that the Zuckerman sisters are involved, and the Zuckermans did Fringe, which is one of my all time favorite uh, shows of all time. So I don't know. That may hopefully push it into the Comedy. better. No, no, into so, the better. What other uh, shows have they better written? What, They've done oh, a, they've true. done a number of them, yeah. Let me but, see. What kind um, of just... Yeah, it's kind of I don't know. Rian, like you said, Ryan Johnson or Ryan Johnson, as I'd like to pronounce his name, is. Uh, I like to call him just, Ruin. Yeah, exactly, and that's the problem. Is I think that once you kind of get to that point, although I didn't like Knives Out, I actually did. I was wow. pissed. I was pissed at the ending. I'm like, are you kidding me? I haven't that's seen it. it. Yeah, oh my I, won't, God. Uh, I won't watch it. I was it? I was totally pissed. I was like, "That's it? Are you kidding me?" I was so pissed at the ending. It wasn't even funny. I was like, "No!" And he, I think he, wrote, I'm not sure if he wrote and directed that or, but he definitely directed that. But there's yeah. a sequel to it. I'm like, "What are you gonna do in the sequel? Like, really?" I, I can relate. That's how I felt during uh, the Last Jedi when I was watching it. Yeah. Really, fucker. Yeah. It, yeah. It's a it's a Ryan Johnson trait to to leave his audience. Kind of, you know, in limbo. <laughs> like, True. what the fuck did I just watch? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. I, I don't know. It feels like sometimes he tries to be too clever for his own good. And yeah, well, yo, bro, you're not M Night Shyamalan, all right? You saw what yeah. happened. M Night Shyamalan's not M Night Shyamalan anymore. So, True. yeah, I and, yeah, I was hoping to like old. It wasn't. No, Split was his. I think Split, uh, Sixth Sense, Unbreakable, Signs. 
and Split are probably and that's a pretty good body of work. You know, didn't he do what was the other one? The lady. Um... Le- um, I'm in the minority. I'm in the minority. I like that movie. Which what what was it again though? I can't remember Lady, the name. Lady in the Water. That's I think is that it. Yeah, with uh, and Bryce Dallas Howard. Was Bryce Dallas too. Howard. Yeah, I'm I'm the, in the yeah. yeah I, I, I see, haven't I, seen that one. But I haven't seen that one. But, um... <laughs> yeah, I said we, I like Lady in the Water and yeah. yeah, I'm in the minority with that in that one. It's it's uh it's his own fairy tale kind of a take. Oh okay. So he uses uh fairy tales. And it's a little, you know, it, you know he's going for that twist. But that's right. what, and that's the thing. When if you go in looking for a twist mm-hmm. and you don't like it, that's that's the problem with a yeah. lot of a lot of movies, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, and I he like doesn't. It. He probably doesn't know the material as well as like someone like Guillermo del Toro, who basically eats, sleeps, and breathes all of that shit. So, you know. Yeah. No, he just seems like he's like a fan of it, mm-hmm. but to to know like the history of like the, a fairy mm-hmm. kingdom, he doesn't really right, exactly. know that but <laughs> he cre- he created uh he created a a pretty cool world like he had the one character that i like there it's called a scrunt mm-hmm. and it's described as a wolf-like creature with very thick like branch like oh, appendages coming out of its back oh, like, a, like a like a hedgehog or something like that huh interesting so yeah and they go after uh they go after the nymph which is bryce dallas howard you know oh, okay and it's it's pretty it's pretty cool i mean i i recommend it for people who actually like story over uh anything else because that's pretty much what all <clears throat> that is is just story and yeah if ryan johnson doesn't have a good enough story in poker face it's not gonna pull and that's the thing yeah. with anything i'm watching the sopranos over again mm-hmm. and you know, I'm pulled in again, all over again. I'm right into Tony's face, like, oh shit, here we go, Tony and Carmela. Mm-hmm. But I, I care about it. Not yeah. like, and and that's the thing about most of these shows. If you don't have characters that you care about, Tony's a bad guy, and I'm I, I'm still rooting for the fuck. Oh yeah, absolutely, you know? absolutely. It's just like Goodfellas, you know. <clears throat> you you root for you're rooting for Henry. You're rooting right. for for all of these characters. They're right. bad dudes, but you're rooting for them. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think Ray's gonna be rooting for Adrian Brody. <laughs> no, he'll probably be rooting for whoever's the the villain, and what well, he he might be the villain. Then so you never know. Well, he's gonna be rooting <laughs> for the hero, which is not yes. a Ray Trey. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, oh, I, I have to bring him into that one because I'm like Adrian Brody. I'm like, yeah, he, he's gonna feel lucky he dodged that bullet. Right. I didn't dodge the Ruin Johnson bullet, but yeah. Oh, no. well, oh well. <laughs> yeah. All right. We were speaking about um, luchadors and masks earlier. Mm-hmm. So Sony Pictures has just greenlit. I, and I don't know why. It's a movie. It's going to be a movie called El Muerto. El Muerto. Mm-hmm. Based on a Spider-Man character uh, mm-hmm. that I think briefly appeared uh in in a book and um yeah i (laughs) i'm not i'm not understanding what sony's doing Mm -hmm. i mean this look i'm one that always asks for uh inclusion right and this is what sony gives me Mm -hmm. is bad bunny like really, dude? You couldn't even choose a seasoned actor, right? Exactly. I mean, how many Latino actors out there? I mean, just it. There's so many that could po- play that probably without it even blinking. You know, <clears throat> I, I, it just seems this is. And the thing is, I I actually want to see Bad Bunny in the new Brad Pitt movie coming out soon called mm-hmm. Bullet Train. I don't know if you got to see the preview for that one. Mm-mm. It, it looks like he's gonna have like a balls out action fight with Brad Pitt inside of a train. Uh, oh wait a minute! I think I did. It's Brad Pitt, but there's a couple other people in there. No, as well. yeah, there's the, it's. Uh, I, I yeah, did see that. Okay. Brian Henry Tyree, I think, is in that. Uh, right. Who, who else? Um, Isn't it Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Johnson? Jo- Aaron Taylor, Taylor Johnson's yeah, in, is in there. Uh, okay. Yeah, a whole bunch, a whole bunch of yeah, folk yeah, are I in that. Yeah, I did see. I did kind of see a couple of glimpses of it, and it's just. 
Yeah, it does look very interesting too. Well, that that should be. And but when Bad Bunny came in, I was just like, "This is something." Oh yeah, I want to see this. Mm-hmm. This is and I and I like his his fight scene, but that's the whole thing. Uh, Bad Bunny's not carrying that movie. Brad Pitt is. Right. Exactly. So his his screen time is going to be very minimal, right. but I, I I just feel. This is another, like I said, another blatant money grab by Sony. Mm-hmm. Let's cast the pop star, the you know pop culture star right now, because mm-hmm. you know he is he, and the guy. I don't know if you noticed, but he went into WWE, Bad Bunny, mm-hmm. and he wrestled a couple of matches, mm-hmm. and he's damn impressive. Yeah. So uh, I'll give him his props on that. Bad Bunny was pretty pretty dope when it came to being in the ring right. and I'm not going to take anything away from him but does that make does him it translate exactly does it translate I'm glad that he's a fan of wrestling you know mm-hmm. but I'm Latino I'm not going to be this dude yeah. <laughs> I'm not an actor but then again I'm not a fucking pop star either right. and I and I just don't get why Sony's doing this it so now they've released two Laurie two mm-hmm. Spider-Man villains characters with movies without spider-man being in the world how do you introduce a character that's that's been introduced by spider-man and try to attach it to marvel without ever attaching it to marvel because that's the way he was introduced right i am not understanding it yeah that's a little odd i think that it might be for probably the new generation that don't that aren't as versed on comic books as like you guys are Yeah, it's kind of, it, it is a little bit weird too. And I think I, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if Sony also kind of said, okay, well, Bad Bunny now is going to also do the soundtrack to the movie too. Like, he, they, oh, like they, they're, that's, that's going to happen. They're piling, you know, on top of, on top of each other to kind of do as much of a money grab as possible. But yeah, yeah, to not have, to not have, um, uh, like you were saying, it's just Spider Man. Part of it doesn't make any sense. It's like, what? Yeah, I mean, I mean even that's even how they Morbius, meet. even Morbius has you know uh, references to other people, and you see glimpses of them here and there. But it's kind of like, it, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. It was nice <clears> to <throat> see references to Spider Man in the Venom movies, mm-hmm. uh, but it's still rough, especially Venom. Like Ray said before, he's a character who's directly an adversary to Spider Man, right. and there's so much tied in. But right. they also they're also doing Craven the Hunter now. Right. Uh, that's another Aaron Taylor Johnson movie, uh, oh, right. which okay. they showed pictures of, and I'm just like, you guys are talking about everything, but Spider-Man. You guys are introducing his whole world, but him. Everybody who's out there. Ex- I mean, shit. Who they're gonna? They're probably gonna make like a, a Norman Osborn movie next, right? Uh, like he's some kind of uh, you know Wolf of Wall Street kind of a guy or some shit, and mm-hmm. still no Spider Man. Yeah, uh, I think Sony. I don't know if Sony's doing this to just hold on to the IP, but it that just seems it, yeah. so desperate. It, <clears throat> I just wish I don't like it happening that these studios buy these other studios, mm-hmm. but Sony doesn't know what it's doing. Can somebody buy them out? Yeah. Elon Musk. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, yeah, it's also just it, it doesn't make any. That would be like having Star, you know, no Darth Vader in Star Wars. It doesn't make any sense. You have to have because it it tie like you said it ties everything in. There wouldn't those villains wouldn't exist without Spider Spider Man. So you can't. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah, I, I just I I understand. <clears throat> trying to get into the market but there are so many characters Mm -hmm. that they can do and it just seems cheap and lazy and executives uh these are suits making decisions like this of course and that's and what you like has a name you know and a sense right well, and like what you were saying, you know, the fact that they have Bad Bunny instead of, you know, using someone like, you know, like Nicholas Gonzalez or or the, the kid that's in um, 
Cobra Kai. Or, yeah, well, he's he's blue beetle. <clears throat> he's blue beetle right now. Yeah, exactly. Or any any Latino actor. I mean, for Christ's sake, you have like I was uh, one of my favorite shows is Mayans. It's like use any one of those guys. Use right. Richard Richard Cabral, who's a phenomenal actor, or you know uh, J D Pardo, who's who's you know a really wonderful actor too. And uh, I mean, you they there's so many that that they can that actually have the skill to be that who that is but yeah it's just kind of Ima- imagine missing out like on a young benjamin bratt yeah exactly exactly like, to come yeah. out and actually wow the hell out of you and mm-hmm. give a performance like hey maybe we want to see this more yeah but it's bad bunny and then what's going to end up happening i really have no idea what's going to happen but mm-hmm. i can guess and I can guess that it's gonna bomb. <laughs> right. It's gonna make some money because of the people who are gonna go see Bad Bunny. Right. But I don't think this is a movie that gets that word of mouth and everybody, hey, you really gotta go see this. Right, right, right. Well, and it's also kind of like what you were saying with his wrestling. It's almost like they're trying to make another rock, which, you know, I mean, I like Dwayne Johnson. I think you know he's a he's a great funny guy and whatnot, but. It, he's like you said very one note when it comes to his films mm-hmm. and it's just kind of like are is that what they're trying to do are they trying to, to say okay well maybe we'll do another wrestler or we'll do another this and that it's like you know yeah there's yeah. very few people that have been able to successfully be singers and actors and do it both very successfully there's maybe a handful if that uh, that have done it both like this is the one thing that i give uh John Cena. I don't like oh, John right, Cena yeah. as far as being in the ring. Mm-hmm. Much praise because I I'm a wrestling fan. I you know, mm-hmm. but he 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 you know he came up in in that biz and he he yeah. did his thing. That man can act. Oh yeah, okay. he's got comedic. Absolutely. He's got Absolutely. great comedic timing. Yep. Uh, he he's got range, mm-hmm. and I I'm like floored watching. I think that's the main thing I really like watching about Peacemaker. Right. Is how fucking far John Cena has yeah. come from just playing yeah. a character on like WWE TV. Right, right, right. But well, uh, I have, I still have to finish watching Peacemaker. But even I remember should. when, uh, what was it, twenty nine? I think it was twenty eighteen or twenty nineteen when he was doing Bumblebee at Comic Con. Yeah, um, he I did, was just I was we were in stitches, man. We were in stitches because he would just throw out these one liners. Uh, you know, during the the panel, that we're just like, holy crap! Okay, John Cena's like kicking ass, you know. And and he was kind of a and credit to Cena on this one, he was kind of an asshole in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Bumblebee, he was kind of like the bad guy. He was the human element that was, you know, I want to kill the Transformers because they killed my right, squad. Right. But then he learned later. It's like, you know, I'm gonna give you guys a pass. It's okay. Just I'm gonna right. turn my back and don't be there. Right. But, you know, it's. It's nice to see him do that and then do mm-hmm. other things where he's a good guy or he did something with I think with uh uh Amy Schumer. What was what was that okay, movie? Trainwreck? I, yeah, I he was in Trainwreck. So, he's yeah. pretty fucking funny in Trainwreck. Um but the guy he's not the rock the rock, like you said, is one note. You know, he's you know, yeah, eyebrows <laughs> eyebrows you know the smolder the smoldering look he knows how to play the rock that's why you know ray's scared of black adam i'm hoping that he uses this opportunity to break that mold yeah but yeah it's a it's it's a one note thing and bad bunny i think is better used as a cameo in a Mm. flick oh kind of like he's going to be in bullet train you know Mm. Out of nowhere, you're going to see a thing open up and, holy shit, Bad Bunny. He's about to fucking throw down with Brad Pitt. I right. think that's cool. Where he shows up in a Tarantino movie where, I don't know, he's getting robbed and then shot in a fucking scene or whatever. Yeah. But other than him carrying a whole movie, I'd be amazed if he's actually good. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see how that works. <clears throat> All right. So let's move on to much better news this is one of the two big topics that i really wanted to talk about today mm-hmm. so we will talk about spider-man later on because mm-hmm. sam raimi you know is talking about maybe doing spider-man 4 he, he, he's open to the idea but first let's go to the that was a possibility 
this is the inevitability. Mm -hmm. So it does look from all reports that, you know, I know Screen Rant posted it, but we had to get confirmation. <laughs> the right. Batman, the Batman Two, has been uh, green lit. Yeah. And uh, Robert Pattinson's coming back, and so is Matt Reeves. I think those are the only mm, two so okay. far attached. Um, based, have you seen? Have you gotten not the yet. chance to see the I, Batman yet. yet? No, but I, I definitely will. It's on my to do list, especially now that it's on HBO. It's like it's easier for me to, to watch it because it's what th almost three hours, is it? Or it's a good, it's hours? a good three, it's a good three hours. Uh, cheers. <laughs> um it's it's a fincher-esque mm -hmm. batman movie right you were saying every that. everything that everything is a batman fan that i would want mm -hmm. it's uh it's it's one of the it's damn good me and ray we actually had a i think probably a half hour 40 minute discussion about i remember yeah it's probably i would say it's it's not the best bat it's not the best movie that's a batman movie mm -hmm. but it's the best batman movie mm -hmm. i mean dark knight i think is a superior movie in the way it's shot and in almost everything the only thing i could probably give uh batman the batman kudos over that would probably be the setting of Gotham, Gotham mm -hmm. felt more real in this. Oh, okay. The new Batman, it feels a lot more real. Feels a lot more organic, not, uh, not some kind of you know alternate universe. Mm -hmm. But uh, and it doesn't, and, and you get Pattinson in the bat suit like almost in every fucking scene. That's oh, all I want. Okay. You, we wanted Godzilla in Godzilla movies, right? Right. We want Batman in the Batman movies. Mm -hmm. And this movie gives it to you. Uh, okay. uh, so top to bottom. You definitely got to check it out. I will. Because, I will. Um, there's a lot of uh, things in it. Uh, I actually gave Krista these to read just recently. Oh, okay. Um, because they do mention the character of Hush. And I mean, you can see that it's beautiful artwork. It includes a lot of uh, a lot of villains. Uh, I, this is a good this is a good read for Batman fans because these stories to me are a little bit more in line with the detective story. He's trying to find out who's who is Hush. Right. And since they've already mentioned him in that movie, uh, mm -hmm. small mention, but a lot of the. A lot of the buildup feels like it's going to towards Hush, which I'm mm -hmm. fucking ec ecstatic about. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a villain who kind of knows who Batman is. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. So, and much more in the sense that he doesn't just know his name. No, he knows who he is. Like, oh, wow. okay. like they know he knows him. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's the unravel. So that's, I was trying to... Uh, what was going to come out of the sequel. Mm -hmm. But since you haven't seen a lot of it, I'm glad I went with this topic first mm -hmm. because yeah, you really got to see this movie as far as like, cause I know you like Fincher stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Zodiac. It has a big Zodiac, big time seven feel. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, and also it's got, I mean, aside from Pattinson, it's got Paul Dano is the, is the amazing, is the, Rid the Riddler. The Riddler. Right? Okay. Yeah. I mean, people yeah. give people got a little like Jim Carrey got a little bit uh, sanctimonious about it, mm -hmm. saying that he doesn't he not that he doesn't like uh, Paul Dano's portrayal, but mm -hmm. he feels like Paul Dano's portrayal could lead to copycats doing shit like that, you know, oh, with the duct yeah. tape and fucking people over. I mean, shit, we had a guy dress up as a Joker trying to fucking shoot people down after the Dark Knight yeah. came out. So, yeah. but I mean, we're still okay. Yeah. I mean, the the thing about that, something like that, though, is that's also a mental health issue. So that's kind of like we got to, you know, <laughs> that's got to be addressed. That's a mental health issue. Yeah. That's, not that's fucking sitting down yeah. and not playing basketball. That's a mental health <laughs> exactly. issue. Exactly. Yeah. Fuckers. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, 
But yeah, I'll definitely take a watch it because, like I said, now that it's on HBO, it's a little bit easier to kind of because you can then digest it in smaller doses instead of all three hours at once. And, and I would, I would ask you to watch the first ten minutes twice. Oh, okay. Because right. it does feel like for me, I've always said the, the that first ten minutes. Uh, they're trying to give you the sense of what it feels like to be a criminal in Gotham. Oh, interesting. Okay. Like how much they fear him. Mm-hmm. The fact that he, you know, he, the, the whole movie, it's I'm vengeance. I'm vengeance, 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 vengeance. Mm-hmm. He, yeah. He's vengeance. They fear him for a fucking reason. Like, right. I, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm hoping this is the role that erases twilight from him it it needs that to do shall, the, that which shall not be named as we say <laughs> it, it needs it needs to do well glory the other day i was watching i love watching watch mojo uh-huh. fuck, you know but fuck those guys they had a list of top 20 most memorable vampires that motherfucker Are was you number kidding? one what what? Number, number one. Oh, these fuckers are going to hear from me, let me tell you. Go look at the list. I'm like, these sons of bitch. I was like, wait a minute. You, what, l- l- not, uh, the, no, no. They, they had David, like, number six from the Lost Boys, which fucking oh bummed me the God. fuck out. I was like, fuck you guys. Uh, what is it? Lost, watch Mojo? What is, I'll watch, to... Mojo, watch Mojo. They had a oh top 20 God. memorable oh vampires. God. And number one was fucking Edward Sparkly oh, Cullen. Jesus Christ. Sparkle fuck. But yeah, that's, uh, he's no longer Sparkle fuck. He, <laughs> he's, uh, Robert Pattinson is a damn good, the Batman. Yeah. He's, um, he's yeah. really good. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just happy. I was very happy with that movie. Because I, 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 everybody else was very scared and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, wishy-washy when it comes to it. I'm just glad it was a really good movie. Well, and I think that the reason why they were scared is because of Twilight is because that's that unfortunately, fortunately and unfortunately, that's going to follow him for the rest of his life. It's kind of like in he the rest of his it. career. He could, he, he could, he well, could. Well, he could, it. but that I think that's what made people very skeptical when they first heard it because they're like, Robert Pattinson, like, because that's what you think about is you think automatically Twilight. There's it's, nothing that that will be that will replace that. I mean, now obviously it will, but yeah. before then, that's what I think was the problem was that it it was so heavily associated with him that people were just like, "What?" DiCaprio, yeah. DiCaprio exactly. for forever was Titanic, right? Exactly. DiCaprio forever was exactly. Titanic until. The Departed. I think for me it was Gilbert Grape. Gilbert he Grape was, was great, but that was be- yeah. that was way before Titanic. That's, yeah, that's you know, true. It, you know, oh, that's true. He, yeah, after Departed. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it became after that because the thing is he was great in Gangs of New York, mm-hmm. but I think the Departed was he was like, yeah, call me that guy, I'll fucking break your face. I'm like, right. oh, relax, Leo. Yeah, I love you. Yeah. And and then he did, and then he did in Glo- uh, not in Glorious. Then he did the Django Unchained, right? Django Unchained, and I mean, he went right pure fucking villain. Yeah, great. Yeah. So uh, yeah. DiCaprio forever to me. Wolf of Wall Street, right? It's, he yeah. then after that, now he has the list. So yeah. post Titanic, the the guy he he shed that Titanic. You know, he's mm-hmm. no longer Jack. No fucking he's to me he's fucking Will, William Costigan. Right. Forever will be William Costigan. Right. So yeah. So right now yeah. he, he needs to forever be Bruce Wayne or what whatever roles come afterwards. Right. Because he was great in Good Times, uh, or Good Time, and uh, no, it was Good Times, right? Plural. Yeah, I think it was. Okay, and then he was great in the. It's not the lighthouses. It's the lighthouse. He was great in the lighthouse. He was creepy in the mm-hmm. fucking lighthouse. But that's a Robert Eggers thing. So. Right. Well, and plus he was opposite uh, Willem Dafoe, Willem which Dafoe. helps. Yeah, which helps. <laughs> Man, really, fuck. yeah, to have somebody to to choose scenery with, and yeah. the guy's just walking and holding your hand through everything. That was yeah. fucking great. Yeah, yeah. that that's, that yeah. that really does help. All right, so now to the meaty topic. Uh, 
I, I, this is kind of bittersweet mm-hmm. because there's like a couple new things that go along with it that kind of you know share this whole thing. I don't know if you heard, but Andrew Garfield's about to take a hiatus from acting. I did. I did. And good for him. I mean, he's done so much work the last five years. And then, of course, you know, with him losing his mother a few years ago, that that really um, took a toll. And it's funny, though, that that it was announced today because it was also the same day that that um, miniseries that he did for Hulu's comes out, which I really want to see called Under the Banner of Heaven. Oh. About the the Mormons, I believe, or that that like really heavy cult. But yeah, and and good for him. And you know what? He's still young. He's what in his thirties, and he can take ten years off and still come back and be, you know, have a career. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing is like it, it's. Well, the one thing is that me and Ray were hoping that he would come back and be Spider Man. I mean, that'd be great. He's, uh, he you know, it, well, he if he looks stayed, like he's freaking twelve anyway, so it doesn't matter. No, you know? I, it, it, whatever. I don't know how many years somebody will take for for something like this. I, mm-hmm. you know, Rick Moranis took him a while before he even thought about right. coming back. Right. So, uh, especially when it's something as big uh, that prompts you to do it as like right. a death in the family. Yeah. Uh. So. You know, kudos to him to to want to do it, but Absolutely, you know, yeah. as as a movie fan, as a comic book fan, I really wanted to see him, you know, don yeah. the mask again and right. and come back for another uh, stint as Spider Man. Yeah, but I mean, well, but we'll see. You know, he, who he like the the retiring or the hiatus may only be a f- couple of years, and couple that's years. fine. Couple you know, years. and that that would be totally fine because, like you said, he's still you know, it would be nice to see him come back because I really enjoyed his. Uh, Spider Man, nope. I thought he was really good, and he's just a good actor in general. I mean, he's just wonderful, really uh, great. He can do comedy, he can do drama, and you know, he can do an American, he can do a British. I mean, he's, I mean, he is kind of half and half anyway. I but, think um, he, I think he was in a, a show. No, it wasn't a show. It was a movie. I, I think I remember watching. I think it was called. Was it called Red Riding Hood? Oh uh, yes, it uh, I was red. It was Red Riding, I think, or something like that. Yeah, Red I saw, Riding. I think that was it. But I did see a, a him as well in that, which was good. Yes, yeah, that's the one, Red, red Riding. Riding. Yeah, yeah. I I wanted to check that out just because he's in it because it yeah. it takes place uh, over like a three like a. I think it's an eight year period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seventy. Okay, nine year period. Seventy four, eighty three, and nineteen eighty. Right. So it, it's a whole like a whole series of movies yeah. that kind of strings a whole story together. And I, if I remember right, he's like a reporter or a detective in the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I've been wanting to watch that shit just because he's in it. Yeah, it's good. I, I saw I think I saw two of the three. I don't remember if I saw all of them, but I did see two of the three. And he was he, really good. In he that, was yeah. he was in both, right? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. He was in set. I think this the first one. And I. I'm not sure if he's in all three. I don't remember if he was in all three, but he's in definitely in two of them. Uh, but right. he also did another one called, I think it's Boy A, I believe was another one that he did, which I really enjoyed as well. He did that, I think, in his younger years. And that was really good, too. A lot of the Brit- the British films that he does is, is really good. If I'm, As far as I'm concerned, the Brits do it better than the Americans most of the time anyway, but... <laughs> <laughs> they they uh the directors at least do i'm not sure yeah. about the actor there's there's i think great actors on both sides mm-hmm. um wait a minute is daniel day lewis american or british british he's uh, irish actually then, i believe then, yeah then europeans have the greatest actor in yeah. all history so yeah that's that's my guy i think daniel day lewis is probably the finest actor my favorite actor no but i think he is the best bar none you know well, between him and Gary Oldman, I think you've got Gary you know, Oldman. That's, my fa- that's my personal yeah. favorite. Yeah. Gary Oldman, I love Gary Oldman. Yeah, yeah, that's that's my that's my guy. That's my yeah. guy, Bobby. That's I love. <laughs> Gary, I love Gary Oldman. Yeah, everything he does, he's just he's awesome. I, he's actually, I just saw when I was scrolling through my Twitter. I think he's actually in a new series that he's in, or there's a limited series or something that's coming I'll out, watch which it. is him. Yeah. I can't I'll remember the name of it, but yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, the fact that Gary Oldman can out black Sam Jackson and freaking True Romance. I mean, come True on. Romance. Yeah, that guy. You know what it is? He's an actor's actor. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. He He's... he he goes he takes uh method as far as Branda did. He's basically the British version of that to a certain extent because he gets to the point where you you don't even recognize him and it's so funny because I forgot I remember watching an interview with Gary Oldman and I was like, holy crap, that's right, he's British because he has he does accent so well that you're like, oh, that's right, holy fuck, he's British. Like, wait a minute. And he's just so very, like, you know, soft, not, not soft-spoken, but just kind of has that, oh, all right, love, you know, and you're just like, he, yeah, his fuck? His character, like, oh, dude, I, I can pick apart so many characters from him and mm-hmm. every single one is amazing like yeah. in my head i i i seen i see him as uh uh lee harvey oswald mm-hmm. which he was fucking it was great zorg mm-hmm. from the fifth element i uh, said yeah. one i said four stones one two three four this is not four stones this is three <laughs> stones i i love here oh he's he's great he he, he creates a character like the yeah. scene in Profe- the professional when he goes, hey, I want everyone down here. Everyone. And then they're like, everyone? He goes, everyone! Like, for yeah. real. Everybody, get them down here, motherfucker. Yeah. Like, I don't care who you have to call. Get them all down here right now before I shoot you. Yeah. Yeah, the, he's one of the best. <laughs> like, that movie right there, The Professional, he is one of the best corrupt cops mm-hmm. in any fucking movie. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of corrupt corrupt cops in movies. Yep. But that one right there, he's one of the best. Because he's doing it in front of everybody. And he doesn't give a shit. Yeah, he doesn't give a shit. He's, I'm gonna get away with it. He just with the fucking toothpick. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna get away with this shit. So, yeah, I, I, I shit. I wish they fucking put uh, they put him in Spider Man Four. Fucking try to That'd find a way. To, try to put him in Spider Man Four. So we were just talking about Andrew Garfield, you know, retiring and not mm-hmm. being able to be Spider Man. But Sam Raimi is open to the idea of. Yay. Directing a Spider-Man four, Yay. I, I think Raimi, Raimi, as as we all know, Sam Raimi is a comic book fan. Mm-hmm. He loves Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, he loves the original Sinister Six, and that's what he was, you know, planning to do before mm-hmm. Sony derailed him. And you got to do Venom. You got to do Venom. You got to do Venom. Based on his work that he's done so far. Would they? I think Sony would totally give him. Hopefully, oh, they yeah. give him part blanche this time. He did launch their franchise and pretty much said "fuck you." And he was asked to film Spider-Man Three. He's like, "You want this yeah. movie? All right, I'll do this movie for you." But he yeah. phoned it in. Yeah, I don't fault him. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing too. And and I know that he's one of your favorite directors, and he's one of mine as well. And it's to me it bo- see that's another thing i think that bothers me about the studios is that when you have a director like sam raimi who has been doing this for 20 actually pro- longer than that 30 plus years and who has success after success after success after success and he knows what he's doing yes. to not give him carte blanche is is a travesty because he like you said he knows comic books he knows he knows how to do all of that he knows how to film pretty much every genre like he has he has done if you look at his body of work he's done almost everything, everything. I, th- I mean i think the only thing he hasn't done probably is a period piece but because i was actually just thinking about that now i gotta look through um, his body of work right now maybe because of that. i don't he may have i don't remember he might he have. Did, but i was just on uh last night on tv was the quick and the dead yeah which is that, a great that- well, that's a Western. Uh, you could right, possibly exactly. make it a period piece, but that's, yeah. I mean, a period piece to me is more like Sense and Sensibility, that kind of period okay. piece. That's, what, that's how I think of period piece, at least for me. But that, but yeah, he's done every almost every single genre, and he's done it successfully. Maybe not as hugely as successful as Evil, you know, the Evil Deads or, or, or the Spider-Man, but he still knows what the fuck he's doing. And he, he has, he and, and I think Guillermo del Toro are very, very similar in their way, how they direct and, and their love of film and their, their um, attention to detail and things huh. like that. I mean, Guillermo, I think is a little bit higher, but that's just because he's more of a nerd. But they, they have that kind of, um, you know, especially Sam Raimi's got such a great eye for detail and such a great... Um, I, I don't know. He has a great way with actors as well. You know, he's worked and he's also worked with so many freaking people. 
I mean, Gene Hackman, Russell Crowe, Sharon Stone, uh, you know, Bruce Campbell. I mean, everybody. Billy, Billy Bob part. Thornton. Billy, I mean, exactly. I mean, he's worked with everybody. Everybody loves him. And, you know, if he does do another Spider-Man, hopefully we'll see a little Bruce Campbell in there, which would be great. You know, because we love, we love it's, the, it's, the, it's, the it's two a pre, of them. It's a pre, I'm waiting to see who, is he, who he's going to be in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Because he's going to oh, be yeah. somebody. Yeah. You know? He's gonna be somebody. So when it as far as when it comes to writing, yeah, he did write. Let me see. Where is it? Uh, yeah, it is a. I guess you could call it a period piece, but he did write the Hudsucker Proxy. So oh, that's right, he did. So that's a trip yeah. that he actually wrote. That movie wasn't directed by him, right. but he was able to write some fucking nutty yeah. movie like the Hudsucker Proxy. Yeah. Which is yeah. a fucking dope. Movie. I guess yeah. I mean, my my definition of period piece is like I said, like something sense like dangerous sense liaisons, of or yeah, like kind of way back. That's what I consider, or something, or even Elizabeth, like Elizabethan kind of, or at least have like. Uh, to me, I think also period piece would be something like L.A. Confidential because it's that particular. It's, yeah, it's, era the, th- it's of the 30s. Film. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, 30s, that's 20s. something. Yeah. But he, yeah, I mean, Sam is you know fucking i love him so it's quick and the dead was awesome i'm glad you quick brought that up great it's a great movie and again it... dicaprio there you go the, that that's another the kid yeah. oh man he's so fucking great as the kid yeah it, gene hack him and gene hackman were great as like a father and yeah. son looking like the son looking for the father's approval yeah that's a dope and fucking hackman movie. i i mean i know he's in his 90s and i know he'll probably never act again but King Hackman was one of the goddamn best to ever freaking do it. I mean, he watching him is like a masterclass. He was so good, and especially in Quick and the Dead, where he was just such a fucking slime ball. He was such a goddamn slime ball, but you loved him so much for that because he did it so well. And there's certain actors that just like Michael Caine for the longest time, I couldn't fucking stand Michael Caine, and then I realized. It's not Michael Caine that I hate. It's the characters that he does. But he does them so fucking well that you're just like, I fucking I, hate you. <laughs> you I, know what I mean? I love I love Hoagie. That's his yeah. Jaws. That's his Jaws four character. Jaws yeah. four. I love Hoagie. Yeah. He didn't die. He wasn't eaten by the shark. So you know, Michael Caine does. I actually I actually dig Michael Caine. Yeah, He's, no, uh, I do too. And that's the thing though is that it, I realized that it wasn't him that I hated, but yeah. the fact that he plays assholes and and these you know really kind of slimy characters it dirty do... rotten sc- dirty rotten scoundrels right. oh my god i love them <laughs> he's a fucking prick they're they're pricks man yeah they're i mean it, they the the movie title in itself it tells you exactly what the exactly. movie's about exactly dirty rotten scoundrels yeah. and michael caine yeah. and who uh steve martin steve right martin yeah oh yeah. my god those two fuckers <laughs> that if you guys haven't seen Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, you guys got to go check out Dirty definitely, Rotten Scoundrels. Definitely. That's a fucking awesome, fucking Michael Caine flick. Um, it's a good comedy in general. I mean, it's just it's just really well done. But yeah, but so, yeah, Sam yeah. Raimi, absolutely. I, w- I hope he does. I really hope he does. It'd be great I, to see. Them I would. Again. I would love to see him uh, come back for Spider Man. I what I really want from Sam Raimi is to finish his vision. Mm-hmm. Um. It's almost like what any director wants to do. Like yeah, Nolan, I'm sure wanted to finish the uh, his Batman trilogy the correct right. way. He wasn't able to. Heath Ledger passed, you right. know, so he wasn't able to finish it the correct way that he probably envisioned originally. Right. But I think Sam Raimi can. Tobey Maguire, I'm sure is I'm, I'm sure would be open to coming back. He was open enough to come back for, right. Uh, you know, for Spider Man, uh, the, the last Spider Man movie. Yeah. But uh, I, I would love to see an old Tobey Maguire as like the old <laughs> battle-hardened Spider-Man right. uh, having to deal with the, some of his newer villains. Or maybe right. even give him these villains that are coming in from this movie. Uh, oh, yeah. Give him, give him Morbius. Give him, mm-hmm. uh, give him the Vulture who's in there. Uh, give right. him all of the... Give him the Craven. Right. Well, then again, it's... Sam Raimi having to use those characters. Are they are they bringing those characters in because this is what they're working towards? Uh, right. It'd be nice. Yeah. I don't think Sony thinks that far ahead, but yeah. <clears throat> you know, I, I I don't I don't know. 
like filmmaking like a Scorsese does. But what I do have are great fucking ideas. And I wish they would fucking just call like comic fans and be like, what do you think yeah. we should do? Well, either that or just, or hire them on, on their boards and, and listen to them. You don't know? they? Don't they? Didn't they do this back in the day? They had focus they, groups with the, exact, with things, yeah. with the target audiences. Do they not have focus groups to do the they suit thing don't. that they know? They probably don't. Well, and I think a lot of it has to do with it's more of a money thing. Like they algorithms. Wanna, yeah, algorithms, and it's it's because I think back in the day they didn't really give a shit about a movie making a hundred million dollars because it didn't cost a hundred million dollars. Whereas now, if you don't make you know, even half that, then it's a bomb. It's like not necessarily, and that's the thing. As I think it's more, qual it's more quantity than quality. If that makes any sense. And no, it it's, does. It's it's sad because you know, as someone who is a lover of film, who wants you know, is is a director, who is a writer. It's like I see some of this shit, and I'm going, who the fuck green this shit? Green lit this shit? Like seriously, there's so I have notebooks filled with all of ideas you know i mean you and i both and ray and everybody has all these you know incredible ideas about what people you know at least people want to see and i know that it may not be you know the hundred million dollar ideas but so what a lot of some of the best movies that are ever made were never hundred million. million dollar movies yeah i mean they were they were these small independent films or they were these you know films that really had heart and soul and people could relate to them and and things like that and, and i mean Clerks, the lucky ones were lucky ones. Yeah, clerks exactly. never made clerks never made no. Marvel style money. <laughs> clerks I, never made Marvel style money, but that but movie because you, will you go and I on both ever. Yeah, because you and I both worked in in that kind of retail, we we can relate to it a thousand percent. I'm fucking Dante. Exactly. I live Dante's life. Same I'm not here. even supposed to be here today. <laughs> exactly. Yes. And on the, on those days, and all the shit happens. Yep. yep. So, I mean, that's that's the one thing I get, and it's, mm -hmm. like, Tarantino, it's, you know, he, he does life. I don't think, yeah. Tar I'm not even sure that Tarantino's movies right. do all all the fucking, you know, box office super fucking draws that's anywhere right. near close to Avatar. No, definitely not. But and that's, I will yeah. remember those movies mm -hmm. way more than yeah. I... I, I how many like times Avatar, have you? How many but, times have, have people quoted Pulp Fiction or True Romance or, you know, any any uh, Kill Bill or any of the ones that Tarantino has done? You know, like they they over Avatar. It's like you. I don't even know any yeah. freaking. I don't. I don't know any lines from, from Avatar. But you Avatar. know what? I will say every day. I will strike down upon thee with great vengeance and furious anger. Those who attempt to destroy and poison my brothers, and right. you will know my name is the Lord when I lay <laughs> my vengeance down upon thee. And that's because of that movie. Right. No, or, I mean that's the one of the best lines ever written, delivered. Just, or just also one of my favorite lines and and uh, a shout out to Bruce Willis because we love you is the fucking scene in the with the watch in in and that's Christopher that's Walken as well. I mean, I remember watching that in the theater and I was like, I, I first sat there for a second going, is he actually talking about what I think he's talking about? And then I started laughing my ass off because I think I was the only one in the theater that really got it. And the fact that Walken does it with a straight face makes it even better, of course. And the but. Tarantino wrote that, and that's iconic. Or True Romance, the scene between again, Walken and and uh, Dennis Hopper about "Am I lying?" The whole Sicilian part, that whole Sicilian thing. And I mean, you know, as much as I have issues with Tarantino sometimes with his films, but he does write these incredible films. He has these these lines, and his soundtracks are great. I mean, like Stuck in the Middle. Every time I hear Stuck in the Middle, I can't help it, but think it's of. Of Reservoir Dogs, exactly. Michael Madsen, you know, doing the whole yeah, the dance, dance. I mean, it's yeah. Uh, I, I, you hear Misery Lou by Dick Dale. Exactly. It's forever oh, yeah. the opening of Pulp Fiction. Yep. You know, you're, you're we're hearing Amanda Plummer right before I will kill every last motherfucking one of you. Damn. Right. Blah, 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 and, it, and it hits. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, those those movies are definitely iconic mm -hmm. and they'll always stand the test of time oh see yeah there, here we go uh i'm glad that hondo chimed in and jack lemon especially in yep. glenn glary glenn ross everyone says al pacino or alec baldwin in that movie but yeah i agree in I that agree particular movie fuck yes absolutely he kills it 
Absolutely. Him um, and Alan, I think in Alan Arkin as well. Alan Arkin. As well. Yeah. And, um, and Every, that's the and that's the thing too. Someone like and Glenn Gary Glenn Ross is one of my all time favorites because I'm a huge David Mamet fan. David but Mamet. you're right. I mean, and the great thing. I mean, even though Alec Baldwin had that one particular little uh, scene that was actually written for him, and it's I think that Alec Baldwin actually talks about watching Jack Lemon it uh, as he's doing those scenes uh, in Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. I think he when he was on Inside the Actor's Studio, he was like you know. Uh, just watching him is, is amazing. And yeah, I mean, Glenn Gary, that whole, <laughs> I, I love the play especially too, but that movie. And when you have the veteran actors like Jack Lemon and Alan Arkin and, you know, and Al Pacino. Yeah. He's a veteran actor at this, but at that point he wasn't at this no, point. They, yeah, they're, he no, he was, he was just, I mean, him and uh, I think him and Alec Baldwin were just in the middle of their game. Right, exactly, yeah. and Kevin Spacey, and, and even you know Spacey, I think was starting out. That was like his yeah, third or his, fourth film, or yeah, something. Yeah, like I think that. he it was still it, er, it was yeah. still early before all the bullshit. Yeah. But yeah, but and then Ed Harris, I think Ed Harris isn't Ed, Ed Harris. Ed Harris is another Ed one Harris of my all time favorites. And that's the thing is Jack Lemon. I mean, if you look at Lemon, especially if you look at Lemon's IMDb, I mean, seriously, like what he's done, everything. The fact that he uh, also. I mean, for me, of course, one of his favorite films of all time is uh, Some Like It Hot. I mean, watch him in that movie. That is freaking comedy gold right there. I mean, there's a reason why that movie is the number one comedy of all time. Well, because of them and also because of Marilyn. But yes, yeah, I like, I like I like Jack Lemmon with Matthau when you put them together. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Anything. I mean, it was you had the odd couple. Uh, you had uh, you had grumpy old men and grumpier old men, and who he also did another movie with uh, God, what was his name? James Garner. Oh, he did. Yeah. Uh, they did uh, my fellow Americans. Right, right, right. Where he played a where Garner played a Democrat and he played a Republican, and they mm -hmm. got along. They got along. Yeah. People, pol politician fuckers. Yeah. They two characters that actually got along. Yeah. And yeah, it's that's a if funny you, movie if people haven't seen that one. Uh, if My you, Americans. I, I, if you want to watch, I think one of Jack Lemmon also his dramatic, one of his most dramatic roles is uh, Days of Wine of uh, Days of Wine and Roses, which is actually filmed here in San Francisco. But there oh, is okay. a scene that he goes through when he's he basically is in a room. I think I think it's his living room. I can't remember if it's his living room or not, where he literally destroys the entire room. But watching that was so incredible because you can see how much pain he's in and and the rage and it's Lee Merriweather, I believe is is his co-star in that and Ooh, nice. It's about alcoholism. It's about addiction. It's oh, about a lot and of he's that, but, and he's the one going through it. Yes. Okay. And it's it's so incredibly well done. And that particular scene, I was like, holy fuck! I mean, it was in it just intense to watch. Yeah, but well, I also he, think he's an intense guy, even though he does a lot of comedy stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, I think he, also one of the favorite of my is when he he and Billy Wilder would would collaborate. That to me was gold because those two. I mean, it was. Yeah, I could go on for it, you know. Like, about that. like one of my <laughs> one of my favorite scenes with Jack Lennon was the one in JFK, where they're at the racetrack, in mm -hmm. in the and he's uh fuck who was the guy he was talking about? It was Ed Asner's character. I can't mm -hmm. remember who he was, and uh, I can't remember the name of the character in the movie, but he was just so uneasy, mm -hmm. just looking over his shoulder. But it was that whole thing where you actually believed somebody was yeah. like. Like looking, looking at him yeah. at from across the stable somewhere. He's yeah. over his yeah. shoulder. Just I, I don't want. I, I shouldn't be talking to you guys. They they might be taking photos. I, yeah, they could, they could be reading my lips. He he, he lives in that moment in the scene, and it, it, it's just it's just it's just great. Yeah, I, I, I'm just happy that we still have directors like Raimi, mm -hmm. uh, like Guillermo del Toro, like a lot of these guys, mm -hmm. and. I, I do like the idea of Raimi bringing uh, Tobey Maguire back for Spider-Man yeah. Four because Tobey Maguire is actually a pretty good actor. Yeah, you yeah, know people I agree. give him, you know his, you know oh he was not my Spider-Man, tough shit. He might not be your Spider-Man, but he was a damn good Spider-Man. Yeah, I enjoyed his. I enjoyed those. Yeah, 
I and I and I say this to this day. He's probably my favorite Spider-Man still because the one thing I love about Spider-Man is that he gets his ass handed to him. Yeah. And he fucking steps up and he keeps coming back. Yeah. Uh, and and even when he quits, he still comes back. Right. You know, it, 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 he's, he, he wants to live a normal life, but he, you know, he knows he can. It's that whole. He pulls me back in. Yeah, with great. <laughs> Silvio was doing that in fucking Soprano go. season three, <laughs> episode three, season one. I love that. Do that, do that scene, Silvio. But yeah, it's, it's so Toby Maguire coming back, mm-hmm. uh, doing that, uh, that whole Spider Man shit. I know mm-hmm. that him and Sam, they mailed in Spider Man 3. So hopefully the studio gives them. You know, Spider-Man yeah, Four to yeah. to kind of uh, yeah. you know bring yeah. it back, but you know what? Before we uh, we were gonna touch on the uh, our top five historical epic mm-hmm. movies. You know, mm-hmm. we're we're doing pretty good on time, so I think we might just you know wrap it up, make it a Frank special under an hour and forty minutes, under hour mm-hmm. thirty minutes. But um, we were talking about movies that are just really good movies that don't make that money, mm-hmm. and one of those movies is actually on my list. Okay. Uh, Wolfgang Peterson directed a movie called Master and Commander. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucking love this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's one of the... It's probably the finest, the finest naval battle I've ever watched oh, yeah. on screen. Uh, Russell Crowe uh, mm-hmm. is the captain of the HMS Surprise. I think mm-hmm. he, he plays... Uh, I forgot the last name, but they call him Lucky Jack. Mm-hmm. Great fucking captain, uh, Paul Bettany's in the movie, yeah, uh, and and it's all about hunting this this French ship called the Archeron that's uh, Archeron right. that's just built for speed and death, mm-hmm. and and it's an amazing fucking movie. People yeah. that that should you know what? Uh, as a matter of fact, hold on, that will be. Uh, I love showing it. I know Ray loves showing this, so let me let me bring it up because that's probably going to be my, un- <laughs> my unsolicited Rick pick. There we go. <laughs> that's my unsolicited Rick pick. That should be it. Yeah. Master and Commander is oh, man. That's like one of that's like a comfort movie for me actually. Mm-hmm. Really good acting. Uh but I think the, the best part about it, it, it's those movies are expensive to film because mm-hmm. they have to recreate a lot of shit. Oh yeah, they got to bring out, they got to make a ship. The ship has to be seaworthy, mm-hmm. uh, has to try to be historically accurate as possible. Yeah, and th- then they destroy them. Right. But uh, have you seen that movie, Laurie? I saw it a long time ago. I do have to rewatch it again. And I'm a big, you know, Wolfgang Peterson fan anyway. I mean, Das Boot, I mean, come on. Das Boot is one of the, the best. He knows water movies. Like, yeah. like Oceanic. Uh, yeah. I, th- I wonder if he's like a, somebody who sails himself. He pr- It wouldn't surprise me one bit or, or if he grew up near that, that kind it, of, yeah. Because, let me, I, I, now I want to look it up. Because I want to say he actually does a <laughs> couple of, uh, of other uh c c movies uh c bearing, yeah I, and that's did, hard yeah, to he do did. too he did yeah. the perfect storm oh that's right he did do the perfect storm he did poseidon mm-hmm. the newer version of poseidon i don't think i saw that yeah that's the one with uh kurt that. russell oh uh, okay uh, let me see. He also did uh, Troy, which does have an opening, you know, scene in the, on the water, oh, but yeah, not much. Yeah. Uh, but it, now I'm amazed looking at his at his at his work. He did yeah. Das Boot. He did the Never Ending so Story. Oh, that's right. He did. He did Enemy Mind, which was my uh, my unsolicited Rick pick from I believe either last week or the week before. Mm-hmm. Uh, he yeah, also did he's a good director as well. He's a yeah. great director. He has yeah. a small. He has a small. Uh, a small, you know, body of work, yeah. but his work is excellent. It's, it's exactly, and that's the thing is that it may not. It's the same thing with Terrence. Malick. Terrence Malick. I was about Ter- to just say that too. <laughs> Terrence Malick. <laughs> that's right? so funny. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't do these. Small epic, body, but fucking awesome. Yeah. I mean, there, but there, those are the movies that you will remember forever, and that, and I still, it's still. It still kills me that Terrence Malick is from like Waco, Texas. Here, because I have I always thought for the longest time he was he's, British. He wasn't. He wasn't a fucking Davidian. 
All right. Yeah. Okay. I was like, how is he not Brit? Like, you know, or even Ang Lee for that matter. Ang Lee doesn't really have that much. Was Ang Lee a... from Waco? No. <laughs> No, but I mean, you know what I mean. Is that is that Ang Lee sure, doesn't have himself. this this huge um, body of work when it comes to directing, but what he's directed. And look, I I know a lot of people give the Hulk, his Hulk, right, a lot of yeah. shit because it wasn't that movie is fucking very beautiful. Right, we and we talked about that. When we did our it, top ta- top ten directors. Yeah, it's it's he's he actually makes a really pretty film, dude. Yeah, it's uh. Like I yeah okay his Hulk isn't like the Hulk, right? But but if he had if you could put Marvel's Hulk into his movie, yeah, it's a class act. Yeah, yeah. Give give him give his movie the Disney money, right? right? Exactly. Give his movie the Disney money and the, the Disney uh, affects people. Yeah. Yeah, that, it's a different flick. Yeah, it's a it's a very different flick. Uh, yeah. Ang Lee is yeah definitely one of those guys that fucking is on that uh, that top tier list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Wolfgang Peterson definitely. If you guys haven't seen a Wolfgang Peterson movie, she mentioned Das Boot. Definitely go watch Das Boot. That's a Lori unsolicited Rick pick. So there you go, exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely watch Das Boot. Uh, watch watch a lot of his stuff because he also yeah. has In the Line of Fire. Which I, I could have yeah, swore yeah. that's a Clint Eastwood movie, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. I could have swore that was Clint Eastwood directing that one. Yeah, because he directs a lot Malkovich, of his own shit. Yeah, yeah, John Malkovich is in that too. Yeah, he that's plays a great. A great flick. He plays a great villain in that. Yeah. yeah, and that's actually the one of the few movies that Malkovich to me, Malkovich, he mills it in a lot of times. Mm-hmm. He, he goes, he goes. What I think he goes, Nick Cage. <laughs> fuck, fuck me for everybody. I know I'm going to catch a lot of flack. I hate Con Air. And he's one of the main reasons I fucking oh, hate Con Air. Really? Him and him and Nicholas Cage, I fucking hate in Con Air. I'm Cameron Poe. I'm Cyrus the Virus. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Buscemi's the be- Buscemi's the shit in that movie, and that's yeah. it. You know, but yeah, not those two guys. And I love yeah. Malkovich, and I love Nick Cage, but not yeah. in that movie. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Michael Bay. Uh, uh, uh. Not today. <laughs> See, I told you it was going to be a fun show. It's mm-hmm. see, Cheers. we should do. I, I would that would be fun to do like your top your top five John Malkovich films or top five Nick Cage. Fi- I mean, because you know, yeah, I have be... a couple of Mal- I have a couple of Malkovich movies that people probably wouldn't even know about. Yeah, like one of my movies on there would probably be Making Mister Right, and not many people know that movie. Oh yeah, okay. You remember that one? Yeah, he played a scientist who created a, a, a an android named Ulysses. Right. Who was going to go into space, but Ulysses fell in love. So instead, he pretended to be Ulysses and he shot off into space. Oh, right. Okay. So, yeah. That's a good, he's that's also, a good one. He's a good director, too. He did Dancer Upstairs, which is a fantastic film with Javier Bardem. I have, Bardem. Seen, I have not. And, uh, who is that? Uh, let me see. Javier, I know who Javier Bardem is, but I think uh, Hondalorian says, scared. I really like Javier Bardem. Mm-hmm, and Hondalorian. So chimed in saying Glen Gary is just the most pure acting movie I've ever seen. Yeah, agreed. Huh, pure yeah. acting movie? Well, one of them at least, yes. But no, yeah. that's definitely one of them. Oh shit, there's a there's a few, but not many. And yeah. that you know what I want to say is with that particular one, mm-hmm. I think they probably had the best casting for the pure acting movie yeah that that was one hell of a cast yeah uh, well plus when you have material by david mamet who you know who knows how to write that shit like nobody's business you know that that helps a lot too um but yeah pure it, you know it's hard because actors nowadays i think are so they're not some most of them are not trained properly and so it kind of pure acting movies kind of almost have become a way of the you know, they are dinosaur. not trained at all. They are yeah. not trained at all. They are picking people up off the street based on this. They're doing TikToks or they're they're freaking. You know, I mean, this it's right ridiculous. Here. Yeah. Yeah. It's, no, it's, it's like, look, I like I like Channing Tatum. I think he's a good dude. I think uh, he's a great, you know, action star, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I did like him. I don't know if you've seen a Foxcatcher. No, I didn't. With Steve Carell. Steve Carell's. Good actor yeah. in, that, in yeah. that movie. 
but uh, he he played a great role. Uh, he played one of the two wrestling brothers. I can't remember their names oh, okay. at the moment, but it was a character of uh, Steve Dupont. Was yeah. it? Yeah, Steve Dupont. I think that's his name. He, yeah. he he was just a fucking prick. So if yeah, if that's not on your list, check out Foxcatcher, Laurie. Well, and then that's... also speaking of, I mean, even though I know he's kind of you know had a reputation the last couple of years, but Shia LaBeouf I think is a fantastic actor. He's he's dude. Always... Don't get me started. That kid, I fucking I fucking love him. Yeah, and I know I he do. has a reputation. Yep. But usually these guys who are the best actors are tortured in some fucking way oh, or yeah. another. And I don't know if you've <laughs> seen it. I can and name I... I can name five of them right now. <laughs> no doubt. So there's a movie that he did. Uh, it's called Honey Boy, and I still have oh, yet to yes. see it. Yes. Honey yes, Boy yes, is yes, pretty yes, much yes. his his life growing up. Yep. And I really want to see that fucking movie yeah, because he plays uh, his own father, I think, in that. Yeah. Yeah, he plays his own dad. But one and, one movie and that's, that I that's love, interesting to me. Yeah, one movie that I love of his is, um, and it's it's the type of movie that I wanted that I want to make as a filmmaker. Is called Guide to Recognizing Your Saints. No, I haven't seen that either. Oh, see, now, and that's got Channing Tatum in it as well, but it's. It's New York in the '80s, and it's and it, the soundtrack is really, really good too. But it's What's just it, got it that in? a guide to recognizing your saints. Okay. And it's um, it's I think Rosario Dawson's in it. It's like got a it's got a pretty good cast. Eric Roberts. Oh yeah, and, Diane yeah. Weiss, Charles Chaz Palminteri, Robert exactly. Downey Jr. Wow, that's a great cast. Well, the, I'm the Robert at. Downey Jr. and Eric Roberts play them as adults, but it's mostly them as kids growing up in the '80s. Oh in, yeah, it's in New uh, York. Yeah, in Shia LaBeouf is the Bronx. Yeah. Shia LaBeouf is is Robert Downey Jr. when he's exactly. younger. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And he he was only I think maybe eighteen or nineteen or maybe even twenty years old when he did that. But the range and I mean that he's an movie impressive blows actor. my mind. And I I own it. I mean I ended up buying it on DVD because and it's one I think one of his best work that he has ever ever. Done. That Ever kid, done. that kid gets a bad rap. I do, and I agree with that. Yeah, he he actually played a role in. The, he's like one of these method actors. He got mm -hmm. tattoos for the role. Yep. The guy got tattoos for the role where he had to play, and he was playing him like kind of like a lot uh, Latino kind of. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. yeah. And people were giving him shit, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm not Latino, but that's the way the character plays." Yeah. And I was like, dude. That's exactly what an actor's supposed to be. Yeah, let, that movie let somebody could have been so somebody. much better if they had if it had been in someone else's hands. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a bad premise, and it, he did great. But I think if if it had been in a completely different person's hand, like a different director's hands, it would have been probably much better. But yeah, no, well, uh, he he he's he's a good uh, he's a great actor. Yeah, uh, Shia LaBeouf is a great actor. I just think that. He probably is tortured, personally in some way or another. Yeah, yeah. But he's yeah. he is fucking awesome. I yeah. even even in the kid roles that he does, like yeah. in, his, in his younger years, Battle for Shaker Heights, whole Disney's yeah. holes. Yeah. I that's one of a that's a comfort movie for me. Like I loved um, what was it um, Disturbia? I loved him in Disturbia. Disturbia is great. It's I a, loved, it's, I love Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye is one of my is a favorite of, of mine this, of his as well. To me, Disturbia is. Teen Rear Window. Exactly. Yeah. You want it? You want to introduce somebody to Rear Window? Show them Disturbia, and then mm -hmm. afterwards, show them Rear Window. Yeah. That way they can be like, oh, they did use everything from this movie. Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> pretty they much. did. They yeah. pretty much did. Not, not, not as much as Hitchcock from because it was just like you know one of those things where it was just yeah. like a like a New York back alley apartment that looked right. over somebody else's thing. But this is suburbia mm -hmm. across the street. Mm -hmm. You get to see from your top bedroom window. Like this is regular shit. It kind of felt yeah. like Fright Night in a way. A little without bit. Without the vampire. A little bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Wait. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. You know that one. That one's a. Uh, holy what? Sorry. I'm like. Uh, now I'm distracted. Wait. So here. Don't worry about this. I'm about to. Uh, let me see. Hello, everyone. How are you? <laughs> okay, now that Rick is gone, let me tell you about my my uh, my movie. I'm back. <laughs> I'm back. 
I'm back. So yeah, but dude, uh, Disturbia. I'm glad you. Mm-hmm. That's another Dis- Disturbia is another great movie that people mm-hmm. don't. Uh, mm-hmm. Eagle Eyes another good and movie who, that people don't. Who worry about. directed that? Was that Kev- Kevin Williamson or I forget who directed that? It was Disturbia might have been that... written by uh, by Williamson. It was somebody uh, good that directed it. I just can't remember who it is right now. Disturbia. Uh, I'll tell you and right it's now. Got, and Carrie Ann Moss is in it, who plays the mom, and, and David Morris, who's a great actor as well, plays the David. Young... David Morris doesn't get enough enough uh, mentioned yeah. as a yeah as a movie he's as a, as a movie dude too. Yeah, he's a he's one of those DJ, character actors. DJ Caruso. That's it. DJ Caruso. Yeah. DJ Caruso. That's he's yeah. he's pretty good. You know, yeah. he does uh he does some kind of like temple movies. He did I Am yeah. Number Four. He, he did. He also did Eagle Eye. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, he did G.I. Joe Ever Vigilant, and I don't know what the fuck that is. That's, oh, he did. <laughs> oh, that, uh, that was Snake Eyes. Yeah. yeah. But you know what he did do that I really love? Mm. Is the Sultan Sea. That's what, that's where I know him from was because of that G. movie. Caruso. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it makes sense because that, that movie, if it wasn't Val Kilmer, yeah, I could see Shia yeah. LaBeouf in that role. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, People... I, I definitely really, um, I, yeah, and I, and I know that it's not, it's not a, a, you know, popular to like him and whatnot, but I think he, he's, he's, and I hope that he does re- not redeem himself, but I hope he does at least, you know, still keep acting and things like that. Cause I think he's very, yeah, good, so. it's like, I understand that he's disturbed or whatever, but you know, we all are in some sense and it's just some people are with them or whatever. Yeah. You you know the deal that's that when you're going in, mm-hmm. it's just don't expect to try to change somebody. He's he's a really fucked up person. Yeah. So, but yeah, he does amazing work. Yep, he does. He really does amazing work. So, yep. but yeah, Shia LaBeouf, everybody, mm-hmm. chew him up. Yay. Disturbia, and then watch your window right after. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, we went through. I already went through a couple of uh, unsolicited unsolicited <laughs> Rick picks exactly. Yeah. So, do you have a pull list at all, Lori? Okay, wait a minute. Let me see. I didn't do any graphics this time because, uh, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm more about the, the talking aspect. So, let me just get... I, I can't, I'm like, I'm not prepared, but uh, let me see. Pull list, pull list. I don't even have it. God damn it. Okay. Pull list, pull list, well, pull I'm, list. I'm wearing, there it is. I'm wearing one of my, my pull list, actually. <laughs> there. What do you got, Lori? Well, actually, no. The pull, pull list is something that we've... What the is pull is something is something we've watched, something we've seen during the week, something we've read, something we've listened to. Oh, okay. You know? um, in that case, I recently watched um, our National Parks, which was on Netflix, which was narrated by um, a former president and the best one we've had lately, uh, President Obama. And um, our National really- Parks. Yeah, it's really beautiful, and it's not just in America, but it's around the world. And it's so, it made me love the world again. It made me really love just nature. I mean, I've, I've always, nature shows in me are, are, you know, I can, I can sit and watch them forever. And it was just so beautifully done and the, the cinematography of it and, he, you know, him narrating it was great. But just how incredibly beautiful this world really is. I mean, just the nature of it and how strongly we have to save the planet i mean it's it's really scary to see that a lot of these places that we have always had for thousands and thousands and even millions of years might be gone in years just because of climate change or whatever else the situation may be you know deforestation or uh palm oil or whatever else and it just so and all the diversity i mean the animals the creatures that just ah it's so it was just really really uh, amazingly you want to uh, check you want to check something out check tiny creatures out on oh, uh, I, on Net- I, yep i saw tiny that creatures too. on netflix yeah yeah that fucking show is great man yeah I, I i love i love uh nature shows too but mm-hmm. the fact that they can do like a nature show on top of like a theme around it like yeah. this little animal might get eaten yeah. But look, he's going to battle. And I fucking yeah. dig shit like that. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. So that was good. And then, um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to, of course, tonight is the premiere of The Offer, which I'm looking forward to seeing that as well. So I'm going to definitely, hopefully, probably watch that as soon as we're done with. Yeah, that's the, remember the, 
the mini series about making of the Godfather. Oh, that starts tonight. That starts tonight. Yeah, that's on, on uh, Paramount, Paramount Plus, Paramount, right? Yeah, Paramount Plus, and uh, and things like that. So yeah, that's. Oh, dude, I really want to watch that. That's yeah, uh, and... you know, when I saw the the Dan Fogler as oh, yeah. Francis Ford Coppola. Yep. That's great, dude. Oh my yeah. god. Oh my god. You know that's going to be a great show. I didn't I'm have hoping. anything tonight other than uh, other than. No baseball. Is there baseball tonight? I'm not today sure. Thursday. Yeah, today's Thursday. Tuesday. What? There better be baseball tonight. <laughs> so yeah, I need baseball because I I, need, I have my week planned out, and I have to yeah. watch. I have to watch Moon Knight. I don't know if you've been keeping up on I that. I did. Either. Oh, that's another thing I I love, and thank you for reminding me. Last night the. Is it Tuesday nights that it's on or Wednesday nights? Oh, well, Tuesday at midnight, but then it comes yeah. on Wednesday in the morning, I guess. I know. watched it last night, and it was heartbreaking <laughs> to me f- to watch that particular episode. Have you watched the latest one? Okay. Oh, no, I had I had the Warrior game, I had the Giants game, and I had AEW Dynamite, so okay. I, had a, I had a full card. I think that if, if Oscar Isaac doesn't get an Emmy for this particular episode, then, it, it, then fuck the business, because he... Is I mean he's a great actor in general, and I, I think this I this him right in right Moon Knight I think is it was the utmost purpose casting probably ever because he know he he's knows how to, to balance it out really beautifully, but this particular episode what literally left me breathless because it was the way he he delved into his past and it's all it's pretty much almost all about his past. Uh, it was just unbelievably beautiful. It's it's tr- it is traumatic, and it will probably be triggering for a lot of people. But what he does in that is just absolutely astounding. Absolutely astounding. Good movies, good stories, good television is triggering for people. Yeah, I mean, I, there are episodes of Good Times, episodes of you know different strokes, episodes of the fucking Brady Bunch that are very triggering. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, Golden Girls, everything. I mean, Golden, that's the everything. thing. Is that they're, I and they're was, going for it. Yeah. Night Court. Oh, yeah. And that's the thing, too. And I was making a comment the uh, not too long ago about writers back then had guts. They didn't They didn't shy away from any kind of, um, uh, any, of any issue. Any yeah, issue. Any, yeah. any issues. Any job. I mean, for Christ's sake, uh, Archie Bunker and, you know, all of his stuff and, and all the racial issues that he had. At, or, or just him with George Jeffer- Yeah, him and George Jefferson were always going at it. And see, that's the thing, uh, even including into today, you know, so many things they're trying to put as this is taboo now. I'm like, yeah. no, you guys don't get it. And this is the new generation that doesn't get yeah. this. If we don't talk about it. If we just ignore it, yep. there is no conversation anymore because right. you're not going to learn. You're just going right. to sweep it under the rug and it's going to be forgotten about. And then when it yeah. comes up again, everybody's going to be up in arms. It's like, right. yeah, I know we're up in arms. You guys forgot about it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I was, doesn't make any sense. So I was reading an article, something about, oh, some woman on a plane started going on a homo- homophobic rant to one of the, the stewardesses. And I'm like, it's fucking 2022. Are we really ha- people having homophobic? Uh, are there still people around? That, and it well, just, it doesn't make any sense. And like, you know, you, you think about all of the earlier shows that had the, the, you know, uh, the gay characters and things like that. That was groundbreaking because you didn't really see it very much. Oh, on wait, TV. You, you had a, uh, you had, what was it? Uh, Three's Company. Yeah. You know, for better, for the better lack of word, Jack Tripper, according to Mr. Furley, and uh, who is the other guy down there? Mr. Oh, Roper. God. Mr. Roper. Yeah. According to the Ropers and Mr. Furley, Jack Tripper was a gay, was a gay man living with two women. Right. And that's what it was only accessible because of that. Right. You know, he wasn't, of course. And but yeah, well, that I, was, I don't... yeah, that was the only that was the only way he like you said he could. And not just that, but the, I mean, I think that technically the, the first gay character that was ever portrayed was Billy Crystal on soap, which was one of my favorite yep. freaking uh, uh, sitcoms of all time. I mean, he. No, well, see, everybody right now is afraid to touch taboo yeah it they're treating it like the brady bunch taboo idol that you know fucking greg brady um, had vincent price exactly <laughs> right? vincent price was on the brady bunch fuckers you know yeah. right 
So look, uh, Star Trek back in the day, mm -hmm. first interracial kiss. Mm -hmm. Yep. There are a lot of people that want to do the first. Yeah. But a lot of networks are so fucking scared. And well, that's the sad part yeah. because look, and, and then people are going to be like, well, you guys are, it's, it's, it's an agenda. And I'm like, no, it's not an agenda. It's reality. Fucker. It's just, you guys don't want to acknowledge shit. Yeah. It's reality. Exactly. Because, it's... oh, well, that's not in my world. It, well, unfortunately, your world doesn't revolve around you. <laughs> you just happen to be in this fucking world, guy. Right. You know, right. or gal or whatever. But yeah. it's just, dude, this is the world we live in now. Yeah. And if you can't get with that shit, well, it's just too bad for fucking you because yeah. we're going to leave your ass behind. Yeah. And the world the world it can be a beautiful place i was talking to people about marvin gay music today mm -hmm. like a guy like marvin gay was talking about love and you know let's stop war because you know too many people are dying but who killed him his fucking dad why because he thought he was a sinner yeah you know it's just come on well, it, you want to you want to talk about music prince i mean look at his look at his prince? fucking lyrics yeah, and, and I mean, what he was talking about back in he, in 1999, the night the album 1999 came out in 1984, and he was talking about bombs. He was talking about everybody has a bomb. You know, we're gonna all die any day. That was what 20, 30 years before its time. I mean, th that's you know, and there's a great wow. video on um, YouTube about uh, uh, what's his name, Daryl uh, McDaniel. You know, obviously DMC from yeah DMC talking about how when they it's like uh, that were and doing that's the way it is well well when they were doing hip-hop that anything that happened the rappers or or the musicians would they jump right on it and it. write a song about it he goes now it's all and it's such a it's only i think about 10 minutes but it's if you can find it find it and he his points that he makes are so perfect he goes now it's all about drugs and about about booze about money this and not and he goes but what back i have then, and you don't yeah he goes back then it was about you know the stories and the stories or you know uh, brothers killing brothers and you know guns and all this stuff and and you know when tupac died and when biggie died it's like all of this it, it came together as a community now it's just all bullshit but the way he he puts it which uh, it's just such a brilliant thing and it's the same thing like at, you know going back to golden girls they talked about assistant suicide they talked about mental health they talked about you know um about older women's sexuality. I mean, God forbid that, you know, women over 40 have sex. I mean, look at Blanche, for Christ's sake. I mean, I love Rue McClanahan. Rue, keep her away from me. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was just, and just also intergenerational, you know, was between Sophia and, and, and Dorothy and, you know, the, the older generation. And, you know, I mean, her Sicily stories are still the best. And, you know, the fact that we <laughs> no longer have Betty White, which is fine. But, you know, her St. Olaf stories, even though they were completely they, out they there. They survived the day. And they have that little kernel of, of lesson in there that you're just like, oh, okay. <laughs> it, it's, I don't, I think TV today is more, I think back then it was more about giving you a lesson. Yep. and teaching you a life lesson and being good and you know now we had fun we laughed but here's here's a, here's a, a lesson that we're going to learn yeah i don't think we learned those things today no uh not it's all entertainment and mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that but there's also nothing wrong with you know learning a little something i like i tell i tell folks i'm happy i grew up in the era that i did grow up in mm -hmm. uh gi joe for all that G.I. Joe is. Yeah. G.I. Joe got along together. They were the military. They were America. They were yeah. multifaceted. They were they were Joes from all walks of life. And that's mm -hmm. what one thing that I fucking loved. And people and the wrong people are gonna look at that and be like, oh, they talked about America. Like, no, it's not America, motherfucker. It's America, you some bitch. Some bitch on America. But yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's just it's it's about it's about uh it's about all of us. Yeah. And I I hate how just people change shit just yeah. for their, their own whatever, yeah. whatever it is. 
And it's not, and the, the thing, it's not, and I'll, and I know that Alex is going to appreciate this. It's like that, um, that monologue that, uh, that uh, Sylvester Stallone has in Witch of the Rockies where he's like, the, the hardest thing you'll ever get hit with is life. That I still listen monologue. to that to this day. And, and the same thing here is that he is absolutely right because life is not easy. It never will be easy. And, and the quicker you realize that and the quicker you fine. kind of, you maneuver through it, however you maneuver through it, you know, that, you know, we all go through trauma and, and that's what shapes us, you know, as, as the cliche is what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And it's absolutely true. You know, you have to, and I think like you were saying, growing up in, in the era that we did, you know, we are tough. We have the resilience of that because we knew how to fend for ourselves. We knew how to, you know, but I think drive I, in a car without a fucking, you know, airbag. It's like, all of that, you know what I, I mean? I, I, ridden, I was riding in the back of pickup trucks with no fucking seatbelt. Right, exactly. And it, and it was the time of my life. Yeah. But see, the one thing that I, I understand about uh, when I was growing up compared to maybe people, people now mm -hmm. is like tv and movies i think i learned a lot from tv and movies yep uh as opposed to things that are going on today yep like i don't know how much i i, I learned i learned a lot of please and thank yous from mr rogers mm -hmm. i learned a lot from like sesame street i learned a lot from reading rainbow that reading mm -hmm. was cool yeah and, and all of this other shit yeah. uh and i learned you know friends mean something from the Goonies, right. I learned that from Stand By Me. Uh, I learned that from Young Guns, you yeah. know, pals. Yeah. And I don't, I don't think the less, I don't think there are lessons in movies today. Mostly, I watch movies just as much as anybody else. And if you guys take something from a movie, that's great. There are some movies with heart. Sonic Two has heart. Uh, there, they're not that many fucking movies that deal with a lesson or. TV shows that deal with the lesson that you can learn from. Yeah. Um, so once again, like I am thankful I grew up in mm -hmm. our time. The time that we grew up in was was very different because mm -hmm. we had syndicated TV. We yeah. were watching shit from the 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s. Right. All at the same time. Right. I grew up on Nick at Night. Yep. I grew up on Patty Duke. Mm -hmm. I grew up on Mr. Ed. I grew up on Green Acres. Kids today don't grow up on my shows. Yeah, leave it they to They grow up on their kinda, shows. Yeah. You know, because of Barney like, Miller. <laughs> I, grew up Barney. On, I grew up on Barney Miller. I mean, yeah. I, they had MASH. I didn't watch MASH because that, I didn't it didn't interest me back then. But I, I watched Barney Miller. I, I, I watched um That's My Mama, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I watched all of these shows. I watched The Twilight Zone, The mm -hmm. Night Gallery. You know, one of those things that I I remember is Malcolm in the Middle, mm -hmm. the opening to that that show. Yeah, Clash of the Titans, Transformers, Mask, all of these things. I was like, I grew up with this. Yeah, these these kids are me. Yeah, so I can kind of relate to Malcolm in the Middle. These kids today, and, and yeah, we're gonna sound like old fogies, you know, <laughs> with risk to not sounding like old fogies. Right. But they really don't get it. No. I mean, yeah, you guys are growing up with uh, the Twitter generation and the TikTok generation. But you're learning lessons from other folks that really aren't teaching you shit. Yeah. And I think that was that's an, that's another good thing that we didn't have was the technology that we have. We didn't have Twitter. We didn't have Facebook. We didn't have any of that shit. So we had to entertain ourselves. My, my Facebook was the playground. Right. Either go out and, and interact with other kids or go to the library and check out a book or, you know, Take ride your bike. It's yeah, ride your, yeah, ride your bike, you know, to the beach and just and, or, and dig in the sand and find shells or find, you know, a seaweed. I remember, you know, times when I used to go down, like one of the things that my dad and I used to do, which I, I loved was we used to go on rainy days to the museum to the to the de young museum yeah so like the planetarium we used to go to the planetarium all the time I used, why to, I, loved... I used to go to uh academy of sciences that was yeah my... i mean that's one of the things i used to love doing that's why i had such a love of in 
interest of science and all of that stuff is because I grew, I used to do that a lot with my father. You know, we used to do that um, all the time. And I and that's why as an adult now, I still love doing it. I still love going to the museum or even watching Cosmos, on, you know, which is another fantastic show on Netflix. I can't remember um, it, but was it Wild America, the one that was on PBS back in the day in the early 80s? Well, there was the Mutual of Omaha. I remember that was the Mutual of Omaha yeah, but there, there was, was that one I that think had it that. Was wild. I think there was. Yeah, it might have been that. The music, yeah, I, I just remember the music more than anything. Yeah, but I remember the, all of those those shows uh, yeah. growing up when I was a kid, mm-hmm. and I think the fact that I had a PBS channel that was teaching me this mm-hmm. shit, as opposed to Animal Planet, with their weekly host of whoever the fuck is you know yeah. hosting their show. You know, I, I, I as much as I love Steve Irwin, you guys cannot beat uh, those Mutual of Omaha fucking <laughs> Wild Africa or Wild Antarctica uh, segments on or on, yeah. on their shows or the Cosmos on PBS. Yeah, nothing beats those old school yeah. shows because I mean, yeah, we were learning. Maybe they don't have the updated information to now, mm-hmm. but you know what? I'll tell you. I watch more from watching young Ben Affleck on Voyage of the Mimi about fucking humpback whales more than fucking Discovery Channel yeah. like taught me. I yeah, yeah, yeah I got to look at the Jacques Cousteau. I guarantee you if Jacques you ask Cousteau. anybody anybody under the age of of probably 40, if you if you say, you know, I'm, Jacques I'm Cousteau, a, they oh, probably Oh, no, I'm not under 40. I was going to say I'm under 40. <laughs> No, you're not. <laughs> but that's what I mean. If you ask anybody that, who Jacques Cousteau is, they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to tell you because they my know. my younger brother would, and he's 38. Right, but, but he's he almost on the had, cusp. But, but he had me right, and my older that's brother what I'm and brother. He's got he's got yeah. But normally, if anybody if under go, if, if the if the youngest person who's at 40 is the oldest sibling in the house, you don't yeah. know who the fuck Jacques Cousteau is. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, Jacques Cousteau, or even. Um, uh, masterpiece theater like you don't know masterpiece theater you don't know you know uh, uh alistair cook or any of those guys you know because it's all you know dun, 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 dun. i mean I, the, I loved watching all of that stuff too it's it as much as i love technology and the advances of it it's also i think been a detriment to oh it's um, super been a detriment because... yeah it, it's it's gotten to the point where everything is so quick and so that you can't you don't search for it anymore you don't go to the library anymore you don't you know it's oversaturated absolutely that's what uh, that's what i was the that's, word i was thinking of yeah that's the key that's actually actually the key term it's oversaturated yeah. uh yeah. there's too much out there and because there's too much out there we have to go consume more of it yeah. so Lori, i'm gonna it's an hour and 47 minutes this is not a frank special sorry frank <laughs> Sorry, Frank. But it's, it's just when we start talking about like movies and performances. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah, I knew this was going to happen, which is great. <laughs> it, it's just it's conversations that you have when when you start talking about anything having to do with movies, and film, right. and, and television. Yeah. Uh, even else, also in comic books, it's it's you know comic books felt always felt like they dealt with everything. Movies, yeah. horror movies, science fiction, they always fought with issues of the day. Yeah. Now it's more, not all of it, it's more entertainment than anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jordan Peele is one of the few. I, like, yeah. I can't wait to see Up, and I think I might do, nope. excuse me, not Up, it's Nope. 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 Yeah. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to go watch Nope, and I probably will show up afterwards and do a quick review now that I'm... Uh, is it out? Or not is it- yet. Oh, okay. Not yet, but once it comes out, I think I might do a a, a review real quick right after. Yeah. Because well, that's I'm one hoping, of the, yeah, it's I'm one hoping... of the, he's one of the few filmmakers that I'm really excited to see shit yeah. by. Yeah, me too, me too. But yeah, I'm I'm just rewatching um, Hunters on Amazon. I, I'm just rewatching that. The like I said, you are you rewatching Hunters? I'm rewatching The Sopranos. Yeah. Yeah, I have yeah, to do that too. Great. I have to rewatch that too. Oh, I, I've been wanting to do it for such a long time, and I think after I watch season one of Sopranos, after I finish it, uh-huh. many Saints in Newark, and then jump into season two. Yeah, exactly. Just so we can like you know go back and revisit what and, happened. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Because oh, people, yeah, okay. people, I think people have slept on many Saints in Newark. Alessandro Devola, he's fucking dope. People don't give him as much credit. Eh, eh, 
De Niro and Pacino are going to be gone, uh, you know, eventually, you know, with time. Their performance will always stand forever. Oh, yeah. But Absolutely. there needs to be other people to come up behind them. Yeah. And the yeah. Devola is one of them. Yeah, he's really good. He's a, good, a great, great actor, um, great uh, body of work, too. He did it. Um, oh, God, what did he do? He did a movie with Reese Witherspoon and um, Josh Brolin. Uh, uh, oh, fuck, what is it called now? And I own it. I can't even think of the name of it right now. Anyway, it's uh, uh, movies. I just had a Lavola. Go, not Gold a Dream. No, Many no, no, no. It's, Coco before Chanel. No, no, uh, no. The it's, Red it's, Sea. No, Mansfield it's Park. Something, American Hustle. Uh, it's not all the. It's oh my god! No, it's further down. It's um. Uh, most violent year. No, no, it's all something. It has all all um. Oh my god! What the hell is the name of it? It's gonna drive me nuts now. <laughs> Why can't I find his movies? All something, uh, The Wizard of Lives, Devil's Not, A Most Violent Year, One Hundred Percent. I want you, Best Laid Plans. You were never. That's it. Reason. Best Laid Plans. That's it. Best, Best Laid Plans. plans. Oh, That's Reese, it. Reese Witherspoon. Yeah, Best Laid Plans. That's what it was. I was thinking Best Laid Plans of Mice and Men. Oh Man, yeah. But I couldn't Ter think of oh it. God, Ray would hate that movie. Terrence Howard is in it. Yeah. Terrence Howard is a horrible actor. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good movie it's a good movie though but yeah i i enjoy it at least but yes um but yeah i agree with you with many saints of newark and it's so funny because i was talking to someone the other day at, at film War. i was like oh did you see it and they're like no my friend said it was awful i'm like your friend is wrong no <laughs> like, you know what it is, is <laughs> you know what it is many folks don't trip that it's a backstory on the sopranos yeah and they they're they're hoping to see a lot more Tony. Yeah, it's when exactly it's not what about Tony, about. yeah, it's, it's exactly about Dickie Moltisanti. Yeah, you know people. Yeah, well, I don't want to see Dickie Moltisanti. Well, that's your problem because that's what the movie's about. Many saints, Moltisanti, Sante, exactly. Pendejo. I'm telling you in two languages now. <laughs> so okay, uh, let's wrap it up here, Lori. All right, so, we done. Uh, do you have any hidden gems right now? I know your shirt. You were telling about um, your shirt. Yeah, I, 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 bought, right now. I bought the, the shirt that has the elements. Oh, from as a matter big, of fact, trouble, big Trouble Little China. As a matter of fact, I gave Ray, and hopefully he, he, he'll, 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 of course, deny it. But uh, with the shirt came stickers. So I gave him one for him and one for you. So hopefully you have it. If he doesn't give it to you, let me know, and I have an, another another pair. But which, anyway. th which Which sticker is it? It's all three of them. It's all three of them. Oh, I need a, I need one. It's of all them. three of them with the elements with their, you know, the symbols underneath it. Anyway. Dude, that's so going to go <laughs> that's going to go on my PC. That's what happens. I yeah, put all my stickers all, on my it's PC. It's all three. So I got that and then I also have um one of the other uh, movies that I just bought which I completely forgot about but I love it. It's one of my favorites, The Faculty. Ray, me and Ray were just talking about that. He says sometimes he hates it, sometimes he loves it. I love that one all the time because I know it's Robert A. Heinlein's The Puppet Masters. Well, and plus, I completely for forgot that it was that it was Robert Rodriguez. I was like, holy shit, that's right, because I was looking at I the back of it, man. and I'm like, holy crap, I love crap, that man. man. I love that man. Robert Rodriguez so, yeah. is, one, is probably, personally, he's probably my hero when it comes to making movies because yeah. he doesn't give a shit. Fuck yeah. the studios. Fuck the yeah. big producers. Fuck the big production houses. Yeah. He does what he wants. That's why he calls his his studios Troublemaker Studios. Yeah, yeah. So that was so I I recently got that on um, Blu-ray, and I also uh, reordered uh, the Grifters and Penny Dreadful the entire series. So now I have those on. I want to watch Penny Dreadful. Uh, I've only seen the first four episodes, but uh, what's what's her name? Um, well, there's Eva Green, who's Eva in Green. it, and then Helen McCrory, who just passed away a couple of years ago. Yeah, she, but Eva she's Green. She's in the she, last. Yeah, she's in the last. Uh, um, uh, Eva Green. I, for one, I love Josh Hartnett. Yeah, he's really he has, good in that he too. has a special. He has a special place. I fucking love that kid. Yeah, I think uh, he was born in San Francisco too. Was he? Yeah, he was born in San Francisco. That's why I probably have a special place for that kid. <laughs> He's a San Franciscan to this day. He's a like, San Franciscan, born and raised. Or we not probably, born and raised, but born, yeah. Yeah, we were probably born in the same hospital room. We never I'm know. Surprise, yep. <laughs> but, okay, okay. Well, anyway, I love Josh Hartnett. Uh, mm -hmm. He's one of my... He, he, 
I wish he had a chance to be Batman for Christopher Nolan's oh, Batman. Be, yeah. Oh, did he really? Yes. Oh man, that would have been awesome. That would have been great. Yeah, I would have loved. I, to I, I would have loved to see him as a Bruce Wayne. I mean, I was pulling for Christian Bale, but he would have been that dark horse actor. They said Josh Hartnett. I would have been like, all right, let's see what you got. Yeah. 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 Uh. So. Yeah. All right, so... So, yeah, let me know. If Ray doesn't give you those stickers, let me know. <laughs> I'll give you the one side because I, I have... Let you I know ordered four, so... <laughs> Straight up, that's going to happen. Hey, you better yeah. give me those, those fucking stickers. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm, like, thinking about those stickers right now. If he doesn't give them to me... Yeah. And we're going to have many words. <laughs> they're not going to be pleasant words, but they're going to be many, many, many words. Yeah, when I saw that, I was like, I've got to get the t-shirt and the sticker, so I'm like, yay. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's still, to this day, one of my favorite movies. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I still have, I probably, yeah, I've been meaning to watch it again, and I probably will within, I guarantee you, one week now. I need yeah. to watch that movie. I love that movie. Me and my brother, uh, we spent so many summers watching that and then when i got to a new place to work the mm -hmm. guy he first thing he did was and then once he did that to me i did it right back and he fuck yeah. was like jack burton i was just like it's all in the reflexes baby yeah exactly <laughs> so jack burton is ingrained in this one right here right i love right. jack burton so yeah all right laurie yay thank you so much this is You're welcome. a fun show like i told you Mm -hmm. this guy right here i know <laughs> well yeah and when you and i start talking about film it's like we you know we can have like a five hour show <laughs> I, I can i can talk to anybody about film people are like oh well what you always say about fuck all those people who talk film i'm like you know what there's a difference between me and them i watch a movie about six or seven times so they're fucking one and yeah. they want to have an opinion after one time viewing yeah i yeah. i will have multiple time yeah. viewing unless the movie really takes a hold of me because i've watched so here just to give you an idea of the the list i had going today for the mm -hmm. epic movies it would have been glory braveheart spartacus there will be blood ben-hur lincoln and the ten commandments wow nice in no particular order though yeah yeah. Those, those are the movies that I grew up watching and yeah. did I watch those movies more than once? You goddamn skippy. Of course. I guarantee people haven't seen those movies more than once. Yeah. Uh cuz some people today don't worry about movies that were about, you know, any that were released before the day they were born so they can right. go fuck themselves. I watched Jaws probably the most watched movie in my arsenal. Right. So, yeah. Uh I love movies, and that's why I get to comment about them the way I do, because I do recognize everybody who's mostly in the movies, mm -hmm. and I try to recognize, what, composers, people yeah. who actually work as part as production, uh, producers. Costume designers. Costume, yeah, costume designers. Yeah. They all play a part in everything. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So, uh, yeah, so if you're not on par with me and you want to talk about movies, Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I'll say that with a smile. And well, and the good thing also about between you know uh, one last thought is you know you and I have we have similar tastes, but we also have vastly different tastes. No, we do. We do. And it's that's... like like me and Ray. Me and Ray, yeah. we 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 share a same brain, but yeah. on certain parts of the brain, we're not we're right. not like aligned. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the great thing. Like if you watch, like go to 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 go back to a, one of the other shows that we did together, watch our directors, our top 10 directors. You guys have almost the same list. And then mine comes in with completely different. Yeah. You know, yeah, and the, that's, the, and that's the, the great pretentious thing French ones. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I don't think I had any French no, ones on I'm mine. Just, no, but I, it's, just, yeah, exactly, it's the same thing. It's, it's like, Honda. you know, we, and that's, what's so great about the fact that we are all friends is that, you know, even though, you guys have your expertise. I have my expertise, but we also still have a lot of mutual, you know, uh, uh, love for film, and that's a, that, that's what I think we, why we get along so well. No, and why, no, that's and why exactly why we get along so well. So well, you know, because the thing is, as much as we have differences in everything that we probably like, mm -hmm. like I have like certain likes that you probably won't. Mm -hmm. We do agree on a lot of shit, oh, and, yeah, the, and the thing is, not just not just that we agree on the shit. 
but we agree on a lot of the same points that are great in those <laughs> exactly. points. That's, that's exactly. That's the thing. So yeah. let me see. Let's finish it up with, uh, I know this is a lot a uh, while coming greetings that's from my brother danny hello Hi, danny. danny uh so we have the hondalorian saying i think ozark's finale is tomorrow nice no ozark's uh, they released the whole season at once so oh, if nice. once okay. once the season is online the season mm -hmm. finale is online oh okay uh so we have hondo winning time was funny and entertaining even though they took a lot of liberties of what really happened I have yet to see Winning Time. That's the story about the Lakers. The on Lakers, H yeah. Yeah, on That's HBO what I Max. I see that too, yeah. Um, I'll never forget that pedophile episode on Different Strokes. Neither will I, man. Fucking yep. uh, Dudley was offered ice cream, and, uh, yep. you know, they saw a lot of funny cartoons with shit that they shouldn't have been seeing. Yeah, so exactly. I do remember that. I, I do want to go through uh, Different Strokes, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, as I'm going. Let me see. Krista says David Attenborough. Yeah. I always remember Richard Attenborough. I think that's right. the guy from, that's his from brother, Jura yeah. Jurassic Park. So, yeah. okay. So he says, preach, Lori. Preach. Uh. You hear that? <laughs> Lord have mercy. Uh, now, now we have the Hondalorian. It's up to us folks to share all the cool stuff we grew up to. Absolutely. So, I agree with this. I actually have... Uh, one of the kids that works... Well, I don't want to call him... I get, Actually, I do call him kid because he's only 20 years old. Yeah. One of the guys who works with me, uh, one of the managers that uh, just recently got promoted, Jonathan, Johnny Action Figures. He's a great. Oh, great. okay. That's who Johnny Action Figures Yeah, is. Johnny okay. Action Figures. Great kid. He's been wa He watched The Godfather. He's right. watched Goodfellas. He's been watching a lot of the movies that I've, like, you know, mentioned. I told him to watch uh, Clash of the Titans. He was like, uh, you mean, just a stop motion. I didn't really like it. I guess the good story, but I wouldn't watch it again. But he watched Airplane, mm. and he tried to show his girlfriend Airplane, and she was like, I don't get it. And he was like, I can't watch this movie with you anymore, <laughs> which I, I fucking love when he told me that. I was like, <laughs> this, this, this kid's awesome. But he just re recently watched Heat. Oh, and wow, he, nice. And he fucking loved it. He goes, I just fucking hated the ending. I didn't want him yeah. to die. Yeah. So I, I love introducing the new generation of movies. Uh, but there's also this other young kid that works for me, Chris. He yeah. must have had older siblings or a parent or an uncle that really showed him shit. Yeah. Because he watches everything that I fucking nice. told him about. Nice. So the, the young generation is there. Yeah. And then finally, uh, dope shirt, Lori. Of course. Thank yeah, you. Fucking it's on it's on T it's on T Public. T E E Public the, the dot com. Storms, but don't yeah, forget. Yeah, exactly. Me. Mr. Mr. Stay Puff. Yeah, I and love... I love even the guy has the, I don't know if you can see it, but he has the lightning, like, even between his fingers, he's yeah, got the dude, lightning. when I saw him for the first time, yeah, I was, like, so awesome. I was, it was so great, but then I saw him later on in my, you know, I guess in my adolescence. Uh -huh. It was like, oh, it's Lord Raiden from Mortal Kombat. Oh, it's fucking awesome. I love the view. Excuse me. I love them even more. Yeah. Well, just even even James Hong, who is still a legend in his fucking own right, with Lo Pan. I mean, just James Lopan. Hong. Have you have you seen? Uh, not yet. Not everything? yet. Not yet. I I definitely want to though. Okay. Have you seen uh, Balls of Fury? Yes, I did see Balls okay. of Fury. Okay, Balls of Fury. Yeah, that well, that that one there is just enough. Oh, I love him. Mm -hmm. James Hong is a national treasure. Oh, absolutely. I, I hope he's from San Francisco. I really do. Or I he lives here. Think? I, I don't want might... him to live in LA. Fuck LA. He no. needs to live here. Yeah. He needs to be low pen in this motherfucker right Fuck here. Fuck yeah. No. <laughs> All the time. He needs, he needs All to the be time. part of the Wing Kong exchange here. Yep. All right. So Dragon we've had. Blackpool, exactly. Yeah. That was the name of our uh, trivia group when we went to uh, a bar Oh, trivia. really? Nice. And we killed it. We fucking won. So. Nice, 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 nice. Lori, dude, this yes. is fun. Yay. Always yeah, fun. I, I think Ray's going to hate me because I had so much fun with somebody else. <laughs> Sorry, Ray. But he owes you those stickers, so there you go. Yeah, I better see these fucking stickers now. <laughs> I know about them. You should text him and be like, I know about the stickers. <laughs> he might get that fucking text. Don't, don't. <laughs> right now, I don't want to be sending texts. Yeah, exactly. Just, 
just to let you know, right? Just to give you the the lowdown and <laughs> what's happening. I don't want to be sending text to folks. Yeah, Ready? exactly. Give me my fucking stickers. <laughs> right fucking now. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> Unsolicited Rick picks. Okay. So, Lori, this was fucking yes. awesome. It was fun. Yes. I hope we can do this again. Oh, d- dude, we will. Uh, I usually have like a a bunch of people that i well not even a bunch it's actually a small list of people that i ask to do this show Mm. with me i didn't know that you would be available which is fucking awesome yeah usually it's alex or it's uh it's danny from uh six scale reviews remember Mm -hmm. watch this six scale reviews subscribe please Oh, I haven't done any of this like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, exactly. Duh. Like Hello. And sub- <laughs> I did not do one like and subscribe. Ray's going to fucking shoot my ass for that one. Uh, you know, I do want to do a like and subscribe with this one. And I want to do a, a like and subscribe with this one. We should just put a little thumbs up finger instead of Don't the... They have, yeah, they have those that you can put on the screen. That right, right there, like, like and that. subscribe. Yeah, I'm just exactly. going to go through all the... No, that's not a like and subscribe. That's it. But that one is. <laughs> And that one is. And that one is. Where's the bow one? Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Bow comes in at the very end. Like and subscribe. That's hilarious. Sorry, Frank. It wasn't a Frank special. Sorry, Frank. That's okay. I love you, Frank. We really do. (laughs) Come in and pick up the books that I asked for. So I'm going to be coming in soon. Uh, So, yeah. Uh, Thank you very much, Lori. You're welcome. Thank you. Always fun. Yeah. Talking movies and scenes and directors and actors. Shit, if we do that fucking list, I, I know I threw my list out there hella fast, but uh, that's okay. One, <laughs> yeah, once again, it. I, I can go on for like half an hour yeah. alone about glory. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. We'll do, we you know we can do we can it's come, do another. It, it, it'll come. I want to save Ray for that one too because I don't yeah. want to do any list without Ray because yeah. I want to dispute his shit. Yeah, that's the yeah. whole thing. I want to dispute his shit. I always I always have something to say about every fucking person's <laughs> fucking choices. Like no, that choice is void. <laughs> bullshit. I like to call bullshit on a lot of shit. Right, so. right, right. But yeah, uh, so thank you for everybody. Thank uh, you, yes, thank you. absolutely, yeah. Everybody, chats, like and subscribe. Exactly, all the chats. Thank you, like and subscribe. Always, always, always. Yeah. So, and I know, Lori, did you have your channel up yet, or no? No, you know, I, I'm not gonna abandon. You reserved it, just, it though, yeah. Uh, huh. You reserved a, a a name for your channel yet, or no? Not yet. I'm still kind of working on. I mean, it's it's in the fledgling stages i'm just thinking about how am i going to do it you know i have to buy i don't know if i need to buy equipment or if i can just do it on my computer or whatever the if you ever need a special co-host for one of those shows i certainly will i certainly will yeah you and right alex here. and yeah exactly I, I, and Ray. yeah me alex i know alex loves movies yeah uh, michelle and i would like i would we'd love to have michelle on i'd love to have um i'd love to have krista on krista darling i'd love michelle to have you on as well on, yeah michelle krista, we love you love them all yeah they're they're great they're everybody's our, great our, folks our, our, our nerd girlfriends and boyfriends so yes <laughs> yeah we have a lot of them. we do we do <laughs> All right, so and everybody. Even one of the and when I finally get down to Comic Con, maybe I'll do like a you know a post or something from Comic Con and whatnot. So mm, that's a little rough. I wanted to do a show from one of the shows, but the fact that they're so packed sometimes these shows that they get yeah. a little bit fucked up. But you know what? We'll Each your own. If you can do it, you can do it. Yeah, we'll figure it out. All right. So everybody, right. thank you. Like and subscribe. Uh, SF Comic Book Company. This was episode one twenty four. This was Lori. I'm Max Effort Grayson. Bye Thank guys. you very much. And bye bye. 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 Bye b